Okay, and Heavens for resubbing. So, Reese and Taylor, thank you for the resubs. All of your subscriptions are about to run out, fellas. So, by all accounts, get yourselves in on your resubs if you've got any. And if you want to gift some subs, uh, then we're, of course, going to love that. But, thank you guys for tuning in already. We've got a lot to talk about today, 27 viewers. Make sure, of course, as we always do, to tweet out the stream because it is always going to be a difficult time to get viewers when it's corona, it's locked down, it's sunny outside, all that kind of stuff. But I think everyone needs a little bit of uh, lambasting in their lives. So everybody, tweet out. That's what we do here. Help each other out. Uh, we're going to be speaking about something similar to that later on. But of course, let's get the action underway, Connor. Um, we've got a lot of things going on this week. Oh. Easy Pog, thank you for the resub, bug man. And uh, yeah, I suppose let's let's That's get better. things underway, I suppose then, buddy. Can you hear me from back here? I can, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Guys, disclaimer in the chat of a uh, World Cup feeling ill. No, it's not Corona because I'm still to this channel. And you've already had it and, as well. <laughs> yeah, and I've already had it. So it's not Rona, but I've got a fat headache. So you don't have to bear with me to ease into this show. Um, I'm a Luke's head at the moment. Did put the wife beater on, but we'll, ba <laughs> we'll, we'll bang on the drinks a little bit later, as we said, with two hour episodes. So we're going to, uh, do you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to roll some of yours. All I'll right. Keep... Let's get it moving. Let's get it moving. Just so you guys know, in the second half of the show, if Connor wants to spam the, the link in real quick, we do have a curious cat. I think I've still got a delay on, by the way. Um, I don't think you have, because I danced at the start. No, you haven't. No, you oh, haven't. haven't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have got a, a curious cat uh, thing to do. So if you guys want to throw some questions in for the second half of the episode, completely anonymously, you can. Uh, we will answer them, of course. We're not going to hold anything back this week. Any question you wish to ask, you can do so. But let's get things moving. First topic of the week, which we tweeted. Everyone's mentions have just been lit on up by this. But Mez, first topic of the week is going to be uh, one thing that we want to talk about straight away, basically after it happened. Because we were, we were the two casters casting that final. Thank you very much, Snipes, for the sub. Good stuff. We were the two casters casting the final. So first topic, if you guys missed it, is the social media sports me. players. Now, I'm just... Using socially esports here as a loose term like because we don't want to we don't want to slam socially as an org because it's not their fault. But the players, um, mostly led by Johnny W, to call him out a little bit, uh, decided it would be time to throw a grand final for the EG final against Obtained. And if there wasn't already enough controversy surrounding this league this time around with Obtained, this time it's the grand final that doesn't actually concern them. They have a lot to go on with. So here's what it is, Mez. Why don't you run us down what happened? Because we were both there. <laughs> I mean, of, it was a bit of a mess. Not even to call him out a little bit, just for how he was toxic. And I will call him out. He was a prick for how he handled that situation. And I don't care if someone sends him that. I really don't. Like, the way you handle that situation is not through that. So, of course, you're in the grand finals. Uh, if you did watch the new socially series that came out last night with Daniel Lochran, I think I'm saying that right. Lochran. And Lochran, the uh, Irish warrior. Um, yeah, so they ended up going 8-0 and in pools in the regular season and shit. And obviously, they got to the grand finals. It was a pickup team, the socially side. Um, so, you know, you couldn't expect too much. But even in the grand scheme of things, they got to the grand finals. So even in, that in itself, it was it's a massive achievement. Obviously, coming up against the Tain, they're a, they're a fantastic side, a top contender in the CDC currently. So you couldn't expect too much. But, okay, you're in the winner's so for the format, the losers come out to best of fives. They need to win in order to take the first place home. So Obtain come out, win 3-0 in the first one. And then something happened with Smokes' mix amp. I believe it broke or something. So there was miscommunication somewhere going down the line as in they couldn't hear him or he couldn't hear them. So there was no comms or nothing. And then come to the search and destroy after losing this on the second best of five, the first map, they lost that. Then come to the search and destroy pardon oh big bird we got <laughs> we jumped in that and then yeah johnny w and co they just started pulling out snipers they started pulling, pulling out, out kilos FR, uh kilos. p90s everything just throw in generally mm. and that wasn't the issue that wasn't an issue to me okay like if you want to throw that map then be my guest like if you want to throw go ahead like but yeah it, it, it's your own it, it, it makes for terrible yeah. viewing and it's terrible sportsmanship but obviously we couldn't even cast that but it's the way that it got handled after how toxic Johnny was being in the chat to Brain and that, how those arguing going back and forth and shit, talking about, oh, where are your placements? And then Brain firing back about, yeah, but you got a 0 0.6 at Mortar and all that shit. I don't know. It, it's just a bit unprofessional. Like, you get to a grand final. This isn't the second time he's been there for an EG. He landed there in uh, Mortar 3.0 and still whined about that. 
when he lost. So it just comes to happen again that he, he fucks around in this final. And it was just a piss take because it torched my time, torched your time. Unfair to EEG for a fantastic season, what we had as casters as well, getting to the grand final. Unfortunate for Socially as well to be reflected on that because it's that's their name as well that was on the board. So it, it's even more fucked. So it was just a shitty way that it went down. And yeah, I think he's just a bit of a prick for how he done it. Right, time to flex on up then. Here's the take for it here. So we were casting this final. We were casting the EG um, online final for this season, season two. And because of like internet issues and server issues, on the Friday was when the final was supposed to take place. We ended up finishing that day at midnight after starting it, I think, at like five. So it had been an absolutely monstrous task to get eight maps played throughout the course of the entire day. And then socially delayed, delayed, delayed. They don't want to play the final that night. Neither what Obtain do. They want to get it over and done with. So in the end, because Saiyan can't get onto the servers, what they end up doing is they go and replay the final on Sunday after the uh, after the European Cup is done um, for the, the Challengers team for Obtain. So they do that. They play the final on Sunday. So not only have we wasted seven hours, not only have the viewers wasted seven hours, the players have wasted seven hours, Ruben and the tournament organizers have wasted seven hours. We now redo it again on a Sunday to get a really quick best of five, which is done in 30 minutes, and then for them to piss about, argue, flame each other, throw the game, and forfeit the final map all in the space of an hour is like the most anticlimactic final ever. And to be frank with you, it's fucking childish. No, it's not even yeah. like unprofessional the way that they were fic the, the, the way they were going with it. Like it's not even unprofessional the way that they were acting. Like unprofessional is not the word. It is literally just immature. And like I'll give that as well. I'll throw it back into brain as well because he was biting on it just as much as Johnny was. And like even that, not even it, it wasn't even just Johnny. A lot of the other members of the team, except Saiyan, because Saiyan just doesn't care anyway. Like they were all pretty much getting their noses stuck into it, and it's a fucking disgrace. It was a mm. fucking disgrace, and I was triggered about it on stream. Like how, yeah, as a caster, like I'm, of, of course I'm being paid, but how am I ever, ever, ever supposed to cast a map like that? Like it is impossible. If it's a show yeah. map, sure, you, you just make jokes out of it, but it's literally a grand final. It's supposed to be like hype. Everyone's supposed to be watching. Everyone's supposed to be there, and it, and, and then they're, they're just pissing in the wind. Pissing in the fucking wind, and it's just dis it, honestly, it's disgraceful. It the shows it, well. it shows a lack of respect to their teammates, a lack of respect to the enemy team, a lack of respect to the tournament organizers, the casters, and the viewers, and the organization they're a part of. It's just like you know that fucking adage about like, oh, if you're baby balloon, not only let yourself down, but you've literally let your parents down as well. You've literally let everybody down who's funded you into the league, who's put the league on for you, and who's watching to the league to maintain it. Like, what's what's even the point of entering if you're gonna do that? Well, like, obviously, mm. you get to the final, you get some cash, right? But, like, it, you, you, not only this, but you're proving to everybody who might see you as a potential teammate that you just haven't got the nerve to hold it on to be a pro player or to even be anyone good in the scene. Like, you just have one minor mishap and all of a sudden you've fucking lost your head. It's a disgrace. <laughs> all right, anyway, that's my it's thought. Just the, it's just the way I was handling it, man. Like, in a Twitch chat and stuff, and the worst thing is smokes. Obviously, his mix at his mix amp broken. You can't really help that. But he was the one that obviously we set up a group chat before each match. You know, two captains vetoes, etc. All that shit. Smokes was the one with the mix amp broken. He was being super chill and cool about it. He was the only one in that map that actually sticked with an M4, sticked yeah, with an M4, played the role. And he was even putting in the chat like, "Yeah, I think playing third map. Like they just can't hear me. It's all good. We're just gonna go before comes." And then you look in Twitch chat and Johnny and that is just going at Growing it like the mouth. going off or something like. Now, don't get oh, me wrong no. here. Like, I really like Johnny as a guy. I think he's a great guy, and I'll vouch for him as a player. But when it comes to his mentality, his head is all yeah. over the place. Like, he needs to get a he needs to get a grip of that. His head is not screwed on at all. When no, it comes I've to never mentality. had a, I've never had an issue with him. Never at all. And as you said, he's a, he's a stand up guy. I can't fault him on that. But the way he handled that, that's just a big fuck you from me, bro. That shit was that wow. shit was horrible, wow. torture. Wow. Don't try to torch my time. Like, don't do that. And we went in a call with the socially guys after just to be like, what the fuck are you guys thinking? Like, just to get the, just to figure out what they were going to do. And you know what? We'll spin this into a positive one. Fair fucking play, socially mm -hmm. esports, because not only did you take a cut of the winnings, which is something that you should definitely have done, um, but you, you also put out a really well worded apology. You also put out, it was a really nicely worded statement. And I'll, I'll uh, put on the reading glasses. 
I'll read it out here. <laughs> so, uh, last night we had a pickup team represent socially in the EEG Season 2 League. Unfortunately, in the final, the team representing us decided they did not want to finish the series. Due to this, we imposed a 20% penalty charge on the team to cover not finishing the league. This 20% was never to be kept by socially, but donated to charity, which is already a huge thing to do. Um, however, the team representing us did not agree to this. In turn, we have asked EG to send payments to the team and league entry fees to socially as agreed before the league started. We would like to apologise on behalf of the team we had representing us for the way they acted at the end of the incredible league hosted by EEG. We still believe that 20% penalty charge should be paid and they have asked the team to donate to charity of their own choosing. Moving forward, we will be looking to pick up a long-term Call of Duty team for the online leagues and challenger events. Now, one thing I also think is, is furthering to the story of them of the team basically being characterised as immature is pretty much the fact that they re basically refused to take yeah. 20, get 20% like fine. Uh, if if there was any contract imposed or any kind of agreement imposed, literally right there is a reason to just file them with a massive fine already. Like, uh, if if that was like a, someone to me and they'd like gone into, I've got a clause in my casting agreement about like defamation, both to me and the tournament organizer. And if if that was broken for me, I'd be imposing a fine as is stipulated in my agreement. So, mm -hmm. um, and if that wasn't paid, then we're gonna have problems. But the thing is, I don't think the players have really had enough backlash for this. Like, I, 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 for some reason, the community thinks this is, like, a perfectly reasonable state of affairs. They think this is, yeah. like, perfectly normal and everyone should be allowed to act like this in a grand final situation when the org is literally asking you to donate the money to charity because you fucked up. It's like, <laughs> imagine if Logan Paul filmed the body in the suicide forest and was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to donate any money to charity, I'm just going to carry on as usual. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Yeah, I, obviously it's not the same thing. You haven't filmed a dead body in a forest or anything, but what you have done is just ruin the reputation of your org, your players, and the league. Yeah. What the fuck is to me, to me, the worst thing was people was putting in the Twitch chat like, oh, are people going on about like this is a land final or why are people taking it so serious? Like, are you mentally matter. delusional, bro? Are you mentally delusional? What are we supposed to be doing, Lam, at the moment, is it? I mean, look at the world around you. Think with your fucking head, oh. man. It's the fact, it's a whole two month season as well. It's a two month season plus delays because of coronavirus. Obviously, now we have, we've had to switch the format completely to the weekdays because the weekends are done by the Challenger Cups and the 10Ks and shit in the home series. So we, we can't even do. Uh, eat, like the leagues on the weekend now the grand finals hence why it was supposed to be championship friday but due to the fuck above servers it had to be the sunday but even then it's like how are people that delusional that you you want to waste your time in a two-month league to get to the grand finals to pull out snipers and well free snipers in, four, in our club four peak and, or four yeah then ca like frs kilos and shit like it's just delusional and for torching my time that entire team can fuck off yeah, I mean, like I say, I don't have a problem with the players individually. I don't have a problem with them. I have a problem with their actions, and I don't think it's fair. Like, this is a thing overall, just as a general by-the-by, fellas. I don't think it's fair to judge someone on one action. I don't think it's fair to say that this person's a prick because they fucked around in a final. You need to have a lot better judge of a person than that in order to be actually to come to that kind of assessment. Now, like, let's be honest, this isn't Johnny W's first offence at being a moany bitch after losing a final. I've experienced the runt of it myself after EG Malta 2. Johnny decided that it was my or Brody's fault for calling out as a caster that there was a player top in a window in a, in a 1v1. It was him versus Rencor. And he decides that it's my fault that he loses the event because I made a casting call that he could hear through the speakers and therefore his opposition could hear through the speakers as well. Doesn't mind the fact that they can't even speak English. It's, it's, <laughs> it's apparently my fault that, we, that they lost. So it's that's something that's happened before. So I've had that firsthand. Johnny's come back to the apartment, which I was living in with him, and just rolled over immediately. So I don't understand here, like what what this guy is thinking when it comes to losing. I, I think honestly, he does just lose his head, and that's fair. Everyone's got their problems. Like I'm not a perfect caster. I've got my issues. I've had rows with people before and had to apologise for things. But I don't think it's fair to call him a prick right off the bat for that. But what I will say is that if you do want to make the assessment that he's a sore loser, you can absolutely go ahead and make that assessment these days. But that won't oh, stop yeah. me from being friends with Johnny. That won't stop me from talking to him all the time about the shit that goes down in the scene and, and all that kind of stuff. That won't stop me from talking to any of those teams because uh, I'm obviously really? pretty good mates with those guys. I've, I've known them for three years pretty much as long as I've been casting. They've been at the top of the game. So it won't stop me from talking to them. It won't stop me from treating them exactly the same way. I do just think that their actions were completely irreprehensible. The way, it's, the way it comes down, shit happens, you move on, but for the whole of it, just fuck you for touching time for us. That's it. <laughs> That's like the whole end of it. Like, it was fucking don't torture our time. Mental. 
Tell him, yeah. Crazy debate was in the semis to have a piss up in the final and in the manner we lost as well. Had to wait over an hour to play, then got scrubbed map free. Shit's a joke, to be honest. And again, well, I don't want to, like, uh, I can see that yeah. like, like has connotations of coming back on EG. Let's just put this in, in, into 100% clarity here. EG had no other play. Their hands were yeah. completely forced. There was nothing they could do. Do we know if they donated to charity? As far as I'm aware, they haven't. As far as I'm aware, they haven't. They've just ignored it and pocketed it. As far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, I would like to see some proof that they did, to be frank with you. And Wait, like, I, this... uh, the players, they were socially told them that because they socially said we want 20%, and the player said oh, no. Oh, I thought it was socially that was donated. No, no, no. Uh, because because the player oh, said no. The player said no to giving the 20% up as a fine. Oh, okay. So I get it, they socially requested that they give the 20% to charity, and I'm pretty sure they won't. Just mental. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's over now, anyway. The thing is, I don't. I I think that they don't see where their actions are wrong. I think they must just think they're just so out of their heads about it. They're just like, yeah. I mean, they, we lost the really first care. best of five. We got torched. The whole series was a joke. The league was awful. It's just yeah, like, that, but you know, we'll see them in season three anyway. So what does it matter? Probably will. Hundred percent, we will. There's no doubt about that. They'll, they'll, like they're not just not going to play a league. You know what I mean? But fuck it, we yeah. move. I mean, we if you, move. If, just as a reminder as well, if you guys have any questions oh, in chat, be sure to throw them in as we're talking. We'll read chat and uh, get your guys' takes on things. Um, as it is, uh, we're going to continue to move on. But of course, if you guys remember that we do take subscriptions on this channel, we are happily easily bribed to say anything that you wish that is in line with TOS. And we're also happily easily bribed to uh, make sure that you guys don't get the Rona. At the moment, we've gone all the way back down to 46 subs after being sat on 80 for the longest time. So uh, if you guys do fancy giving us your Twitch Prime, or your Twitch sub, that would be much appreciated. But of course, there's one other thing. We do have a Curious Cat link, which is in Twitch chat somewhere that you guys can catch up on. If you want to send us anonymous questions for the second half of this two-hour blockbuster episode. So, real question is, should EEG ban players as they see it from the leagues? No. Uh, as they see fit, if there is a player who is being abusive to the league, player who is being like overtly horrendous, saying obscenities like the N-word or something like that, yeah. or is even cheating, I would say ban them. But for this kind of thing, there should be like at least a warning system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, hard to, <laughs> it's hard to physically say we're going to ban you for fucking around because like, as much as it's a piss egg, we can't understand their reasons. It's just not. We can understand their reasons. It's just not needed. Do you know what I mean? We can like, understand. I can yeah, understand you, it if you're if you're tilted or you've lost your head. Yeah, like you know, your comms are gone. It's shit, but like you ain't got to go about it that way. You just you, you can just. Simply I would have off. been totally fine if they had forfeited the last map. The yeah, issue was like that. the Play issue the was was just throwing the search and yeah. then being toxic about it after. It was just a joke. Like it was just a, it was it's just not fun for us to cast. And that's like my first. That's my first grand final since the first EG Mortar event in Black Ops Four. Which I don't like just getting back into casting, so I was even shit then now. Now I'm a talent. Like now it's just <laughs> as that's like my first grand final since then, it just pissed me off like majorly. I mean, look, think of that from Mez's perspective. You've waited two years and been snubbed for every grand final by every tournament organizer in preference of like me and Brody or something, right? Or, or anyone else, right? And you to think disclaim, that's not me hating on them, no, too, no, by it's the way. not, it's not. Yeah. But it's like, you think maybe there's a part of you which thinks maybe you deserve a grand final, and you finally get it. It could be a good one. It's two good teams, socially versus obtained. Both of them have talent from challenges seen. Both of them have talent who uh, one of them has team that's young talent as well in smokes, and you get that fucking shambles of a series. Like fuck me, what a waste of time. Yeah, that that's just the whole torch about it. But <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it, it is. is. What it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, uh, I guess there's not really much more to say about that one. Um, I think we just kind of move on with that. I do agree that there should probably be some kind of agreement in place that stops that thing from happening again. Mm -hmm. Because to be frank with you, um, it is a bit of a joke that that kind of thing happens. Uh, maybe an organization needs to kind of, if they're going to send a team into a league, just needs to have some kind of agreement that says, if you guys fuck around, we will take the earnings. And also, I think that the earnings should be paid out to the tournament, uh, to the organization, and then the org should distribute it to the players. I think that's a much easier way of doing it as well, because it means that everything yeah. is by the books. And if an organization decides to keep all the cash and they get exposed and they shut down, and it shows really who the slobs of the industry are. Anyway. I mean... That's how I used to do it in future. I'd get paid from. That's how I did it in Void as well. That's yeah, how I did it in Void. Pay the players. I paid the players out, and if if if, if there was an agreement to take the cut, then I'd take the cut, and I'd just work. Yeah. Out 
until there are tighter t uh, terms of service and these kids won't learn. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily on EEG for that. I mean, I will say that EEG's rule set when it comes to like um, what is considered unreasonable behavior is a little bit um, a little bit vague. I'll also say that when it comes to like hosting up on lobbies and times that are definite cutoffs for forfeits, they're pretty poorly enforced because they just want the match to go ahead. Um, and also decision making around like when servers are offline is something that can never really be fixed anyway. Like that's just mm -hmm. something that's always going to be a problem, especially in this COD where the servers seem to be down every Which fucking five we, years, five five what days. We had on Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it happened earlier on in the week as well with Virgin Media and all that stuff. So, like, obviously it's a series of unfortunate events, but there's no there's no excuse. No servers went down on the Sunday. It was seamless grand final. Everything was fine. Connections were great. First series was good. Second series was a shambles. And to be frank with you, there was nothing really to commentate. Jamie Ryan Birch preaching. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, Jamie. Uh, we'll get to that. In a I think. I think while we're in the topic of EG, we'll go in. We'll go on to the obtain thing. Yeah, we'll go on to the next topic, which is, of course, if you didn't see it on the timeline, um, one of the most, I would say, standout names from EG, uh, from competing in tournaments in the lands, took a big blast on Twitter at uh, TO and EG itself. That being in the form of Vickle, who plays for Pushing Gaming, now. We all pretty much know who Vickle is, what he's, what he's we all achieved. Love Vickle. Yeah, we all love him as well, what he's achieved. And of course, this for me was probably their biggest loss that they got handed in an EG since the time of the time of dawn. <laughs> right. Let, no, I've got the tweet up here. It is translated yeah. using Bing or whatever or Google from Spanish. So let's get it out of the way. The English is going to be broken here. We're going to have to try and figure this out as we go. Fuck but, it, I don't want to get a copper burg. Run away with it. We finished the EEG top eight playoffs. Uh, we finished the EEG playoffs in top eight is basically the gist of what's trying to say. Many thanks to the organization, uh, which I'm guessing is EEG, for a fuck, I repeat, fuck deal, which is probably just going to be shit deal. Um, skimming BYD rounds that have not been played. It was clear that the team we were playing against was the official sponsor of EEG. See you next time. So the idea is that because obtained esports this time around were an official sponsor of the EEG season, which on an ethical grounds I already have a problem with because I don't think that a team who's sponsoring an organization, I don't think organizations and tournament organizers should be allowed to affiliate at all. It's a massive conflict of interest, but we'll leave that one there. Um, I think that, that this, the, the general premise of it was that there were rounds in a certain dispute, whether a team had been like disconnected or something like that, that were given away to the obtained side when pushing clearly don't think that they should have been. And as a result of that, the pushing gaming side were ultimately upset by the fact that they lost that series. They felt like they were hard done by. And as a result, looking at who's a sponsor of the league, you can possibly see how it can come to the conclusion for EG that for sorry for pushing that EG are giving favour to the obtained esports side because of their affiliation for the league. Now, I agree with Vickle in this in the vein that there should be no way that an organization competing in a league should ever be a partner or sponsor of the league itself. I think that is a massive, massive conflict of interests. I've voiced that to Ruben as well. He says probably won't be doing it again with all the controversy it caused this time around. So there is no reason that should ever be happening in any world, if you ask me. Um, and I personally think as, a, as, an as, a, as an organization, as obtained, and no slag on Dano here, but why the fuck are you going to EEG trying to sponsor them anyway? What's that about? I mean, I can't, I can't really talk on why he wants to go VG. I mean, like, obviously, EEG, it's a big name. It is a big name. They've got, what, 10K followers, 11K. Done at numerous LAN events. I can see why he wants to work with them, I think. But, yeah, for the conflict of interest, I think it... it I can't see Ruben doing it again. No, put I it that can't way. Like, I Especially not with how this all kicked off this time. Yeah, because it just kicked off too much. And I mean, personally, to me, I don't think that there was a sort of injustice done. I don't think that Ruben have entertained of snake pushing gaming out because from what I know of Ruben, I know he wouldn't do that. And especially to pushing game in a team that has been to what every event. Uh, they have been they've, such big, big players in EEG's yeah, history. They've been, to, like, they've been to every EG event. They've been to every EEG online final, semi-final apart from this one, etc. Like, there's no way that I can see Ruben doing that, and I, I can say that personally. Uh, I don't know what actually went down. I didn't read too much into the situation. All I know is 
something to do with saying they missed I, their as far as i'm aware what bomb. it is is that there was like a, a di- it beat them? i think there was no there was like um an issue in the game where like a round or like a s and d was like replayed or something and like um pushing felt like they were hard done by like the rules had kind of been swayed in obtained favor just because obtained were a partner of the league you know what i mean yeah um, i think that's kind of like how i interpret the result um i can understand why vic would be upset about that like understand it from a, a spanish perspective again it is going to be a question of sore losing and but mm-hmm. there, there's obvious reason there there's reasonable doubt to assume foul play like it is it is okay to say that now by no means do i think obtained are at fault here i don't think obtained to go whispering in, in eg's ear going hey give us a few rounds here and there you know that kind of thing is a good thing to do by no means do i think that's happening mm-hmm. that would be ridiculous to even insinuate um i do i don't think the eg either were going um will give rounds to obtained i i know ruben he's a very objective guy the only time i've ever seen him be not objective was at clash was 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 at malta 3.0 with the clash team because they were his friends because he competed with that roster because he was affiliated with that roster um but even then what he did in that situation was he took himself out of it he said remark you sort it out instead so if there's one thing that i got to give credit to ruben for he is exceptionally impartial he knows exactly Mm -hmm. what he's doing when he's sorting out these disputes when he's sorting out disputes like this and he knows whether there's a sponsor involved or not in order to make sure that they do not get tampered with or hurt in the process so for me i don't think there is a world in which ruben or e yeah, ever allowed this to be like a bias situation but i can understand why you perceive a conflict of interest to be there yeah i think it just goes down to the simple fact of if you can find a reason to moan as to why you lost you're gonna do you know what i mean i think it just goes to that like i think i think that's essentially what happened but I mean, it is what it is. As we both said, I don't think that it that it was a uh, it was foul play at all. What does obtain sponsoring? What does obtain sponsoring it do for obtain? No, they have one. They get the same promotion, so wouldn't it be a waste of money? I'm not like I'm not the, too sure on what it is that they have in place. I don't understand. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, Mikey. They get to the final. They're literally on broadcast more than any other team because they go through losers bracket as well. Well, I mean, the reason I can see obtained wanted to sponsor because it gets the org out there. EEG is probably one of the most watched AM leagues, if not the most watched AM league. I'd love to have. A, I'd love to see EEG's analytics as well. Yeah, because around us. So obviously, as us being producers and casters, we have to put all sponsors on stream. Therefore, obtain a sponsor. So whether they're not, whether they're playing or not, their logo is still on stream on a slideshow. On yeah. repeat, they're on every graphic. They're on every slideshow. They're in every map. They're in every intermission. So for for an, a sense of that, people there are people you'll get that will look at that and think, "Oh, what's obtained GG?" People will look at me like, "Oh, what's GMR is in gamers?" People will look at me like, "Oh, what's Eat Well?" Because I mean, for us as well, before oh, starting, no, season two, yeah, before starting season two, we all looked and thought, "What was Eat Well?" We've never seen this sponsor before come in. Um, we were all just curious what it was. And then we found out obviously it's it's a food company. So it's little things like that. You just got to look at it and and think. From a business perspective, I can understand why Ruben does it as well. Like, don't get me wrong, Obtain probably have a bit of cash as they've managed to sustain a CDC team all year long, which is something that not a lot of orgs can do this year round. And um, they probably have a bit of cash and they probably want to splash it on a marketing budget. Now, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, Organisations should not be contacting leagues in order to be part of a sponsor scheme. Companies that sell products, production studios that sell products in terms of design or production, that's fine to contact leagues. But an esports organization to sponsor a league to me just seems a bit odd. Um, we were offered a package. Oh, okay. Offered a I've package by Ruben to put money into EG yeah. to help EG yeah, yeah. the 4.0 go ahead from a funding perspective. A marketing strategy is exactly what they offered. Oh, yeah. okay. So Ruben came to you, Dano. Uh, George, I got it. George, I got it. Ruben's literally just DM me. He said, I can explain. Okay. So he just got to me. Uh, the first meeting was about the 4.0 sponsorship for, more, uh, for EG. Okay. I couldn't attend. Because obviously of Corona and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So when that happened, Ruben just said, uh, "I can keep on all the graphics until the end of April." Therefore, that explains the season right. yeah. because of Corona. And he said, "Hence why the sponsor stopped until the end of April due to agreement." Right, and he just I said, see. "Yeah, you can explain it." So it wasn't a sponsorship directly to the online leagues. It was for the event because they couldn't attend the event and wanted to help the community in EG. Okay, makes more sense. so I don't have a problem with that now. The yeah. reason I say that is because Obtained had no interest in a, in attending Malta 4.0. Now, the issue that I still take in it is that they still kept the sponsor when it was transferred to an online league. Um, like I, think that was, I think that was just purely the agreement. I think that's, because, yeah, it's just going to be an agreement thing. Um, obviously so I, understand, Corona. I understand it. 
the the thing is like if your team is not attending the um the event i have no issue with you putting something in for the team that is absolutely fine reason being is because there is no risk of a conflict of interest your team isn't going there's no members of staff going you're only going to be part of the management side of things there is no biases there is no conflict of interest perfect that's fantastic thank you guys for clarifying that dano and yeah. ruben big love to both of you we both have a lot of respect for you so thank you for dropping into the stream and clearing that one up really appreciate that should that have been said beforehand, like a statement made? I mean, no, not really, uh, doesn't he? Just they have no on. reason to disclose that, yeah. though. I mean, the, re the reason, reason being is if Malta would have gone ahead and it's all those sponsor things, like if a, you would have Malta, just it as a normal sponsor. When you do Malta, when you do a LAN, right, you ha you do sponsor reads as a caster. So we do sponsor reads. Mm -hmm. We legitimately just plug the sponsors. Now, I wasn't going to be going to Malta 4.0 anyway. We didn't agree on a price or didn't agree on something anyway. Um, but these two would have been, Brody and, and Connor. And in the end, um, the sponsor read would have been like perfect for Obtain, sponsored by Obtain Esports. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, people don't even need to recognize the logo anymore. They've got a name now. They can go and look for it. Online, we don't do sponsor reads, really. We can do yeah. if we're asked to. But the reason being is because like the online links are so cluttered. We don't have much of a death segment. Teams just start and stop whenever the fucking please. Online links yeah. are so hard to kind of coordinate for that reason. But like, like there are... Go on. But having a sponsor read is like that kind of thing. So if it's for Malta, great. Online league, less okay. Mm -hmm. Like for what George said, like we can't really do on un on seasons because there's there are very very few teams. I'd say literally probably three to four that actually talk to us in chat and ask if they can start the map or give us so the most, time. You know, give us the yeah, right information. So, so most of the time, it's the <laughs> simple. Funnily enough, though, obtained one of those teams. Right. Well, yeah, they are. So it's like Jay Rezzy, for example. Like so, most of the time, we we have to sit there and just like need to make sure that the team's in the right place, the graphics are correct when we're both producing. And sometimes it literally goes from map one to map two. Then when you think you're changing hosts, some teams just literally fuck start that up map three. and yeah. just start map three, like completely out of the blue and change over. So while we're expecting a little break, it gives us a chance to go for a drink, have a piss or whatever, whatever we need to do if we need it. Uh, but yeah, by the time we're back, it's like map three's already fucking started because some teams don't change. Some teams don't communicate with the casters. So... It, it, it's sometimes just a clusterfuck, but it's what we've got to do to make it work. So we make it work because we're the fuck best in the business. Absolutely. In this instance, though, harkening back to the original point, I do think Vickle was probably in the wrong to go yeah. ahead and tweet that and yeah, stir that pot a little bit. Like, I obviously really like Vickle. I don't want to like slander his name at all because he's been no, no, really, no. really good to us as casters and as well. He's a fantastic guy as well. I could, we can all understand his frustration. As I said, if you can pick up a thing to moan at, you will. Yeah, exactly. If you're a player, you lose. You've got to have something to moan at, something to blame it on. It makes it easier loss on yourself. You guys can work. Just that W. Yeah, <laughs> king of it, isn't he? Fucking monster. <laughs> um, but like in the end, uh, I don't think I think Vickle was probably in the wrong to tweet that. But then again, he doesn't have all the information available to him at the time that we just have now. So like now we can look back on that with rose tinted glasses or with the benefit of hindsight and go, okay, maybe Vickle was wrong to do that. But at the mm -hmm. time, with the information that we've just had uh, here live on Rummy Boys. Um, being disclosed it wasn't disclosed at the time so therefore he has no idea that that's going to be the case and he just sees obtains logo flash up on the stream and he's like hang on a minute they must be giving them free rounds so you can yeah. understand from vickle's perspective why this thing comes across and this is why exactly the same thing that we say all the time on this show and we preach it not only should you at people but you should also uh, give people time to answer back and also mm -hmm. assume there's another side to the story assume that there's you know don't assume the worst all the time like we can all live in harmony if you just just communicate. This is why most relationships fail. It's why most business deals fail. It's why most things fail. Because there is just literally a lack of communication between people. So if you want to be completely transparent, be so. And I think it will solve a lot of your problems that come into worlds getting slander towards anyone. Um, and we got, obviously, if you did do that, we wouldn't have anything to talk about on this show. So for our own benefit of a purely selfish one, please stop being, uh, please stop communicating. <laughs> That's great for us. Okay, uh, I think that one's been done to death. We'll move on, Mez. Next topic that we have on the board is TSU Esports. They opened a tournament organizer a couple of weeks ago. TSU Gaming, I believe it's called. It's literally just the same logo, but in orange. And um, I originally had some concerns about this. And my original concerns stem from the same thing, once again, of a conflict of interest. Reason being is because I also am a big advocate, as Nick Lethals will know, just sort out well of having people do one thing 
at once. Yeah, be transparent unless it's by Curious Cat. Exactly right, I <laughs> okay. Um I'm a big I'm a big advocate of having people do like one thing and sticking with that one thing, right? So we do beyond the call, we do casting, that's all kind of in the same remit. People who do like org owning and then do tournament organizing and then play at the same time and then own like a media brand, etc., are probably biting off more than they can chew. And my concern here with TSU is the fact that they already own an esports organization. If it's the same people involved in the tournament side of it, then in themselves, they're going to have a problem because their management staff, which I'm assuming is already pretty small as it is, is going to be stretched even more thin um, when they could be dedicating more resources to the organization. Now, I was clarified that it's only just co-owned by one of the people who is actually part of the TSU uh, esports brand. And then obviously the tournament organizer is actually a separate group of people. So I think that's fine. Uh, again, though, Mez, I think this stems into a, a further debate that we've had many times about when it comes to T TO's opening. We had it with, e with EAL, with ELC and all this stuff as well. How do yeah. you see this going for the TSU guys? Ugh, I'll tell you now, it's not easy to run a league. And if you want to look at casters and shit... Um, we charge. <laughs> we Yeah, we charge. Uh, but... To me, I'm, I, I would say, like, even if, you, even if you're not looking to go on Call of Duty, it's something outside of our area of expertise, which it isn't because we have talent and we can do anything. But I'd say that not to fuck casters around. And the biggest one I had, the biggest one we can say we had from that was from EAL, which never went ahead. And it was just like, it was just a complete fuck around. We had contracts signed in place and everything. Oh my God, Snipes. Yo. Yo, what the fuck, Yo. brother? Holy shit, then. Hello, Andreas. Damn. My Love guy. That. Love Fuck that. Me. So, there we go. Uh, Arthi on top got a sub. Eamon, the hot coffee, got a sub. Rugsy, Finesse, nice to see you here, Amber. Thanks for lurking. Uh, Hixie got a sub. Thanks for lurking. Unify, Harry's here. Dereal, thanks for lurking. Dano, thanks for lurking. Bids, thanks for lurking. And, nice uh, of course, Goofy, thanks for lurking as well. Please say Ramsey got that. one of them. Ramsey got none of them. <laughs> yeah. Ramsey's still on the hunt for his sub. Uh, yeah, massively appreciate that, Snipes, bro. Right? It goes it goes a long, 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 long way. So much appreciated, bro. Oh, fuck, I forgot what it was. Yeah. So uh, the, the thing with EAL was we all had contracts signed. Uh, I feel like we could talk about it. It's, it's yeah, we can. Like, it's it's one of the bridge now, isn't it? Yeah, it's all under the bridge. We we got an, we got a public apology and we got an apology in DMs, DMs as well. So. Uh, from I won't say whose name it was. Uh, if you've seen it, you've seen it. You know, I actually gifted him a sub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finished. Unreal. Jesus Christ, love Unreal, it. Unreal, Taylor. Yeah, it, it's more to the fact that yeah, we won't mention his name. If you've seen it, you know, run about. So we won't say it now, but. Yeah, the fuck round of that is we all had contracts signed, etc. It was supposed to be a big league, to be honest. It was supposed to go ahead many, many, many different ways. Many tournaments were planned. Many things were planned. And, of course, we was contacted. Hence, I said, you know, we had contracts. Uh, a Mozart coming, HNK, as well as new graphics. Um, yeah, we was, we was contacted and shit. So... We thought it was a go-ahead then. Obviously, one person who was running the league just went MIA. And when I'm in MIA, we all thought he died because there was no report, No communication, Twitter no account tweets, inactive. No likes, no nothing on any of his social medias. So we thought he was dead or something. So we was like, okay, what the fuck's going on? So we're talking to the other people of the team. And, you know, they're like, they're, they're talking in the fact of, yeah, well, we're waiting on him. We don't know what's happening. He's running it. So we were all stuck in a rut. We were all like, okay, well, we'll, we'll just, like, we'll keep this in the background, keep it in the back of our heads, keep it there and so forth then one day you know he rises from the fucking dead like jesus and he just tweets he, he messages us and he's like yeah sorry but this shit ain't going ahead and to us it's just i'll go back to what johnny w and shit did don't waste people's time so to, so to you guys at tsu um by all means start your league but no it's not going to be easy and just know not to fuck people over like if you keep a genuine head and you keep like a genuine word about shit like then you will you will do good but you need to make sure that you're balancing both out. Like you can't put, you can't put time into TSU and then less time into the org if you want it to work. If you're not into the TO, sorry if you know what I mean. So for me, it'd be like keeping a clear head and make sure that you don't fuck people over because it's just fucking annoying. Yeah, it is really annoying. And I think for TSU, the the battle that you guys are going to face is the fact that ELC have suffered the same thing. In the current climate, there are realistically two big tournament organizers that everybody knows. It's Val and it's EG. 
and you're never going to be able to run from that. And it's very, very difficult. I mean, these guys, Val and EG, have been around for, like, I think maybe five, six years each. Like, they've been around forever, and there's a reason why they're the top in the scene now. And at mm -hmm. the start of things, there was a lot of tournament organizers. It was very clustered. You had Val, you had EG, you had Dom. You had other people kind of things bringing, bringing things in. You had Unity. Uh, you had all these different organizations that were yeah. trying to put on tournaments for similar prize pools. No one was really standing out. So the idea being here is if you want to be a good tournament organizer, you need to deliver on your promises. You need to say things that need to, that you need to say things and they need to come true. Because there's so many times with different leagues, different organizers that have made empty promises and they failed. Look at ESPU. If there is ever a tournament organizer that you can learn from for any mm -hmm. mistake, you look at that shit bonfire of a, bar of a brand <laughs> and look at how badly that went. That is no disrespect to Harris or or um, James. No disrespect to those two. Great yeah. guys, lots of love for them. Um, we love spent, the spent lots them. of time with them in London and stuff. But Jesus Christ, was that a mismanaged brand? So many promises, so many failures to come up on those promises. Do not ever like the the issue being is like tournament organizing is so oversaturated. And the thing is with the CDL as well now bringing in the challenges events, there is barely anything coming in. Um, like players don't want to play tournaments right now. They're they're already overstacked. They're already overplayed. They've yeah. got to have a scrim schedule somewhere. So like these leagues, if you're going to put on a league, we're going to put on a tournament organizer or something. You need to make sure that you are organizing and rendezvousing with other tournament organizers to make sure you're not stepping on each other's toes because otherwise people won't want to play. Yeah, the amount of crossovers and shit that have gone down in the past that have obviously been fixed, it's much better now. But yeah, you don't want to step on each other's toes. Just to read out what the TSU guys said in the chat. Um, so starting with Jeb, we have some big tourneys planned and I do want Cast as a message to Paige and Bath to try and get some sorted, but with the new tourneys and I own it, but I have different staff working it. Yeah, uh, by all means, we've seen what you put in the chat. We left it up to Bath to contact you as, uh, like, yeah, we, we always, we're always talking in the BTC chat. So by all means, just negotiate through buff buff talks for the mez completely different crowd in tsu gaming i don't do a thing there on my own i don't have time hence why it's different people there yeah yeah i own it and use different staff me and goes to own esports so different people completely see that's much better that you got two different yeah, terms of staff working in the to and then working in the organization why have i just seen ramsey center forward put the world's worst suggestion in chat the reason i say this is the world's worst suggestion is because teams will take the piss let teams schedule their own games. If, Ramsey, te if teams can take the piss, they will take the piss. Yeah, Ra Ra Ramsey, I'm going to put a big like decline on what you just said, brother. I might just time him out for that. Oh. <laughs> that that's AIDS. I don't know what I've just read. That is let, pretty, bad. That's let, pretty bad. How about you let Caster schedule it then? Yeah, Yeah, let Caster schedule it. because we'll we'll, We will literally put it in the middle of the day so we don't have to work until millions o'clock at night. Yeah. How about we just let Caster schedule then? You know what I mean? Come on, Ramsey, mate. Use the use the loaf there, Drake. No, Josh. You're Josh. Think about it. Son. Think about it, son. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Come on, son. That's why we leave it up to the TOs and, and the schedule organizers because <laughs> we leave it to big broads. Yeah, we leave it. We leave it to Brody timing. Brody time. EG schedule. We leave it to that. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think uh, as an ex player, it's so hard to coordinate games on the team. It works so much better when. It's Dates. yeah exactly because the thing is like you'll be ready to play on one day ding and then the other team won't be ready to play on that day and then they want to play on a different day and you won't be ready and as soon as the tournament organizer says you play this day or you don't or you lose one of the teams will forfeit if you're not attending then the, play the team's are just like right we'll have to clear our schedule let's we'll do this instead then like that's 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 the difference there ding bap thank you so much for clearing that up that is the issue ramsey i think mm -hmm. don't listen uh what number one thing that i would say is um don't listen to players <laughs> Because 90% of players are fucking idiots. Like, they'll, they'll want you to, like, do things a certain way when it comes to disputes or hosting or all that kind of stuff. Like, in a perfect world, you, like, whatever, you, whatever you say, online leagues are never going to be perfect. It's online. There's so much variability. People will disconnect. Internet goes down. Power goes dev out. Errors. errors. Dev errors, servers, everything. It's all out the right. window. So no one's ever going to be happy. And it's always the players who complain. So the players yeah. are always going to have the most to say about the littlest things. The biggest and most glaring issues with the tournament organisers are constantly being patched up. And teams do take the pitch. You organise things and then a couple hours before you get a, you get a message like, we've got a very good scrim, we don't want to miss out, then we have to reschedule. Players are very unreliable. Yeah, at that point, in, in, you just fucking forfeit. 
Like, if you're in a league and you do that, you just fall for it. I don't it, know. But... It's, it's up to them anyway to decide what they want to do with their rule set. I would be much more interested to... Val have self schedule and EEG have set dates for the 24-hour rule. I think either one is fine. I don't like the self schedule with Val. I've made that clear to them before. I think what you should do is you set a date range for players to play their games in between. And then you mm -hmm. self-schedule with that, which is what I think Val do. EG setting dates is fine, but then again, you have like 200 entries to your league. You're working overtime to set those dates, and they don't always work. And then you have to reschedule some of those dates, etc. Uh, coach is always a good option. Yep, but again, where are fucking half of these like random AM teams who are like 200 yeah. teams in a league going to find a coach? Like obviously for challenges teams, that's great. Sorts out a schedule, sorts out your scrims, sorts out your matches, but. Uh, an amateur Not level. The low, yeah, the lower tier teams and interest in having a coach because they think that the, the dogs bollocks get rounded and moan. Yeah, and then go for a different team next time around. Get rounded again. Yeah. Go for a different team next time. Go rounded. And then like maybe make loses round two, and then get rounded. Like, it happens every Literally. time. Literally, uh, I mean to get back on point though for TSU and opening a TO. Um, I think, I it, think it can work. Funny. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it can work. Obviously, it only being EG and Val, and of course the Corona. I think it's opening. I think it's opening up good time for people to sort of play something. If TSU can provide good tournaments, I just say that you need to make it interesting. You need to make it eye catching, interesting. Like you, you can't need to just do something do that. different. Basically. Yeah, you can't just do the. Oh my God, we've got a variant five v five on. Let's just put a hundred pound prize ball on it. Do you know what I mean? Question, go ahead, HNK. I'm Chazza, man like Colin Mez. Man like I'm Chazza. How you doing, brother? Uh, but yeah, like I, like Connor says, I don't think you can just go and say 5v5 variant tonight, 7pm, start time, mm -hmm. only like 32 slots, 100 pound uh, prize pool, free entry. All that yes, I'll be doing that now. Why so... start an even fighter when there are so many around? This is the problem, right? It's the same thing with podcasts and stuff. Unless your podcast yeah. is different, unless your tournament organizer is different, then it's just going to get lost in all the oversaturation. That's just how it is, I'm afraid. Why not collab with other tournaments slash Mojo Ds? Because the thing is, if, if a TO is built up, so say example, TSU now goes to EG. EG don't need TSU. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? EG so don't need TSU. Them. Val don't need TSU. E ELC, maybe? Yeah, something like ELC. Or EAL if they come back. It'll be shit unless your podcast is great like this. Yeah, I completely agree, bro. Hit my hit my yearly hunger for COD. I mean, fucking chalk it. What was you? Yeah, this is the thing I'm saying. My tournament organizer is different. Everyone thinks that their tournament organizer is different. I won't say yeah. who, but I had someone coming to me the other day about running a show. And they basically, their opening pitch to me was, it's a <laughs> show where we, where we interview someone for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, so it's the 1v1, yeah? And he's like, yeah, but it's got better guests. And let me tell you, the guest they had was not better <laughs> at all. It was a fucking <laughs> shit show. And I was like, you're literally just, you're literally wasting my time talking to me about this. This is the 1v1 with less time and worse guests. Oh my God. It's like, what, what is there different about that? Like, everybody, every man and his dog thinks that their show is different. Every man and his dog thinks that their tournament organiser, their organisation is different. But what are you doing that is actually different? Like, I mean, look at it. it ADOS is succeeding because they're doing different stuff with their social media. They're doing different stuff with how they announce things. They are actually, like, changing things. They're doing their own way. They're paving it their own way. I can't at them because it's under NDA, I'm afraid. I would love to at them, but I don't want to, like, fuck this guy over. Like, even if I do not like him or I do like him, whatever, I don't want to be that guy. Yo, like, I'm George. Yo, I'm George. I'm not at him. I'm not at him. <laughs> because the, the whole project is still under NDA. Not for me, personally, but the whole project for them is under NDA. So, like, I don't, I don't want to get into a legal battle. So. <laughs> and also, for those of you in the chat who don't know, NDA stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement. We had to sign on this morning. Really? <laughs> what you put in the chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't talk about that because it's, you know, NDA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I agree with what George said. Like, it has to be different. It just has to be different. Like I always say so, at them, but the issue being here is it's one of those situations where legally that, like, I don't You can't know. at them, though, because it's, it's a legal thing. Like, you can't at them. If we could, we would. I know yeah. I would. Like, yeah, I, I would. George, I would as well. I would absolutely have this guy's life. It's the show where we are, but do I fancy going to court during all this corona? Because I've talked about someone's show. Mm -mm. Imagine getting fucked out of fifteen pounds because someone can't read, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of people know who, but like, it's 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 general. Like, if if it when it all is announced, I will literally like lambast it to shit. Like, it'll all come out in the paint then. So don't worry yeah. about it. Um, but yeah, for you guys at TSU, just make sure it's different and hire us. But there needs to be something that's actually different, is what I'm saying. Like, 
whether it's the way you social media campaign a thing because eg and val mm-hmm. social media is fucking abysmal let's be honest whether it be that you've got to get a good rapport with players so they give you good reviews that kind of stuff like whatever it is you need to make sure that there's something that sets you apart from these two big dogs if you're going to start this up because otherwise it'll be one of those things that will open run one tournament we'll get paid and then it'll fucking close never do a tournament again that's just how i see it going right anyway let's move on what's next on the list baby what do we got are we going in the list order yeah might as well i'm sure something else you want to talk about i was not i was not sure if we're going in the list order or not yeah yeah here we are uh so it goes next to mr jamie ryan fucking birch um this is absolutely god tweet this. yeah this is something that i feel very very passionate about uh some that I know we feel passionate about, some I felt passionate about in prior projects, even before this. So I'm gonna go into mine and George's Twitter real quick. I've got I'm it already up on screen. Oh, read it out. On the 28th of April, Jamie Ryan Birch decided that he was gonna go to the top of the mountain, and the real God was gonna whisper in his ear. And he came back with this commandment of a tweet. This is literally biblical shit right here. Okay. People don't realize how much a like slash retweet supports organizations. Go back and like that org's tweet. I want to rephrase this. Go back and like your friend's business tweet or content creator's tweet. This, my friend, should be added to the 11th commandment. This is fire. Now, reason being is because as a as a uh, a company here with Beyond the Call that operates basically out of the love of our hearts, basically not for profit at all, right? We are, we, whatever money we make is reinvested back into the company. So every, every Twitch sub, every gifted sub that you guys are given in the last two months has actually gone back into getting new graphics, emotes, transitions, and all that stuff made for when we revamp everything back out in about a week's time or two weeks' time, right? So here we are, right? This is such a good point from Jamie because we literally rely on you guys to get us out there more. We rely on like Dave or, Socially guys, ADOS guys, whoever whoever comes into stream bids or whatever to, to tweet us out, raid our stream, uh, say that we're doing this on the like the 2K shows, the 1K shows, our homestand events, if we're going to be doing one this weekend, I'm still not sure. Um, but any of these kind of things, right, that we just throw out, like th- that is what we mean. Like go back and like that tweet. You have no idea how much one tweet impacts analytics and impacts someone else seeing it and then the next person seeing it. It's like Chinese whispers, but it, the message doesn't get lost agreed and even to throw this into a further a further depth like look at it outside of gaming right okay everybody loves the high brands you know what i mean everybody loves going out on weekends for the clubs they want to wear you know you want to have your massive chain on you want to have you know your, your high tier wear so for example your friend starts a clothing business right why are you not why are you not bumping them man? why are you not, why are you not supporting them yeah, why are you not buying it? Why are you not buying it? But you'll go to the shop and you'll buy Kenzo for like 100 quid. Tell me why. Why would you go to a shop just because it's 100 quid so you can look good in photos and try and impress females that like, it, it, like that, that shit doesn't matter. If a female is coming for you for what you're wearing, Bro, she's gonna cheat. On, she's just gonna cheat on you. Like, what, what does that matter, bro? Mess has been hurt, mate. Mess has been hurt. <laughs> nah, cause I don't even own any of that shit. I don't own that shit. Cause I don't. I don't feel the need to. I don't go nah, out either. and buy nine pound t-shirts. Cause what? What? Why do I have to? Like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't need to wear that. I, like, I can wear fucking boohoo man, which is a five pound top, and I look swollen in it, and I'm sexy anyway. So why does it matter? I don't need that shit. When I can buy one of my pal's clothing brands, support him, help him further, like. That's the shit I'm on. I knew with me only like if my personality is not my Hugo boss. On that note, if your friend releases a power, don't expect free. But exactly, bro. Like, but you gotta buy that shit though. That's supporting. That's the point. If you release something, are you expecting you are you gonna give it to your friend for free? No, because it's all, it's a business at the end of the day. It will always be a business. One thing I always say is, is another thing as well, right? This is something that Jamie didn't really touch on, but one thing that is really helpful. If you're a Twitch streamer and um you want to support your friends or you see someone who is a twitch streamer and you think he's great but you can't sit there and watch the stream the whole time leave a tab open tab follow whatever you don't even have to sub bro you don't have to sub. just follow the channel leave a tab open tweet the link and then be gone like you don't have to you know the shit just goes a long way like people are just delusional bro like oh let me go let me go to the shop and get a 90 pound kenzo shirt because i want to go out the weekend and look absolutely fantastic because 
you know, I'm going to impress so many females. But on the flip side, I can go buy my pal's brand that costs £20. It's Looks still just a good as good. Brand, and I'm supporting nice my pal the rock exactly. long run. And not only that, it's like the same thing, isn't it? When you, Even if you go out wearing that, other people are like, oh, that's my shirt. Where'd you get that? And you'd be like, oh, this sick brand that just opened up. Honestly, give it a go. Like, it's actually pure quality. And then they see right. that, right? If I open that right now, you'll see about a thousand, ten pound, five pound boohoo shirts yeah. because I don't need to buy the expensive shit because one, I don't wear anything because I'm sexy. And I, live two, on, I live on ASOS, I hate, mate. You know what I mean? Uh, at kind of as you live my streams up and sometimes happen massively. Yeah, like, I'm not watching. I don't have your sound on because I'm, I'm busy working or I'm busy doing shit, but I've got your tab open. Like, I, I don't need to I don't need to sit there and watch you every day, but I can have a tab open for you happily. Like, I don't, I don't need to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mute the tab, not the stream. The uh, honestly, brick is the brick is right. Like as the George. Oh, right, and not as in like yeah, the George brand of Asda. Yes, that's not not uh, not that I live in Asda or something. Nick was about to get flamed. Also, Nick sent me a message earlier saying I won't be around for any boys later. All fucking here, and he's been here for the last hour. Hey, <laughs> said that. Like, grow up, Nick, man. <laughs> grow up. Nick, just grow up, man. But yeah, Jamie, to to what you said, bro. Uh, yeah, I, I fucking. It is, it is it is the truth mate it is the truth on, mate. like especially as us as well the, the amount that this kind of thing like actually helps us and resonates like if we announce that we're doing like uh, let's say in two weekends time where there's not a homestand event that we do the coverage for that homestand event next weekend the, the two weekends time just any one of you banging a retweet on that lets another person see it and is like fuck that's sick i'll tune into that and then we don't get 60 viewers we get 160 viewers we get like 260 viewers and then obviously that helps us more we can get jobs with the cdl then we can get jobs with other casting opportunities i mean just a couple of like lucendi guys letting me cast their cs matches and then bumping me up even the players etc has actually let me get hired by two different companies for counter-strike now which are going to be announced soon which is absolutely sick like, it's mental that that kind of thing happens to me. And it, 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 all it takes is just one, two people vouching for you. That's all it is. It's amazing. Yeah, like... I, don't, I, I can't even touch on it anymore. Like, a retweet and shit, it just goes a far way, and it, like... We're not telling you to support us if you... Like, you don't have to, but it's just appreciated. It's as simple as that. It's just a retweet, a like, tweet in the stream, whatever. Like, it takes two seconds of your day. Like, two, two seconds. So... It, it's as simple as that like with that being said uh tweet stream <laughs> <laughs> go tweet the stream take two seconds <laughs> yeah exactly i mean even like okay this is actually a really good example right here right um woody is recently come back as a designer right woody's come back as a designer i th i give woody a lot of respect to the designer i once uh, hired him and connor and um, farron who doesn't really design anymore to, to do a piece of work for Void back in the day, and it's still one of my favorite pieces of work which I've ever seen. Like, it is amazing. So, again, to Woody, like, if anyone ever sees Woody's designs out on Twitter, if he's, like, tweeting them out for anything, right, get that shit, bang a retweet on it. Bang a retweet on it right away, because the... Woody, you, 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 you have you Twitter in the chat. I think it's Woody Creates. Yeah, it is. So, like, if you, um... If you get that stuff out and like you you send you like if someone sees that it's like you know when people always do like those those freebies and they're like oh I made a header for like crim six or whatever crim sees it and then all of a sudden that guy's fucking dms are lit up by the fact that the crim six has just even replied to him they'll be like fuck that was a sick header man how much for this work or whatever like all that kind of stuff you have no idea how much of a long way that goes for graphic designers podcast hosts organizations whatever if it's something big it's something different bang a retweet on it it does so much for everybody uh, guys, I see you in the chat. It, it's Buscal not my birthday. Connor. No, it's Buscal Connor's it, birthday, mate. Oh, no, Connor. I'm taking the oh, fucking yeah. piss, you nonce. Uh, <laughs> uh, Buscal Connor, bro. Happy birthday. Hope your day is very blessed in your coronavirus house. You're quarantining. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing, Brick. Uh, I do the same thing with Ali. Ali Ginge, he's my go-to graphic designer these days, along with Woody. So if I ever see anyone like looking for graphic designers, straight at it. And logo designers, I haven't spoken to ACKD or Alex Dales, uh, who's a logo designer, in like three years. But every single time, I'll at him because he did a logo for me once, which I was just so impressed with. Mm. So like, it's one of those things, man. Every single time, you just got to give the people who you give respect to give them that little bit of extra clout because all it, 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 you have no idea how much that actually helps them. It does so much for them. It actually really does make them like it. It gives them the opportunity to to see things through someone else's timeline, and then that's business for them. That's money for them. That's money in their pocket. We're all helping each other out. Like all you gotta do. Wow, I've got a good example. Uh, Ruan, the guy who designed my logo. I was talking to him when I contacted him. Such a genuine guy. 
and has so much passion for what he does and works for so little. Many organizations people trying to get one over everyone else. We should just be supporting everyone. And not either. Yeah, exactly. It should mm-hmm. just be a support fest. Like, obviously, there's going to be beef. Obviously, there's going to be people who don't agree on certain things. I mean, we see yeah. that with, like, RT and Razor and everything like that. And, like, Arion sometimes getting a bit too big for their boots. And different organizations going head to head, right? But the reason being is, like, it, obviously, esports is a competitive market, but there's no reason why the individuals in esports can't help each other out. You know? Agreed. Like, yes, it's good to have a competitive drive against other people, but at the same time, you ain't got to be cocks. Yeah, always like work in silence is what I always say. There's no need to brag yeah. about your work and there's no need to like send your work to someone and put it in their face. Tweet it on the timeline and then let everyone else do the work for you because genuinely you have no idea how much of an impact that one retweet makes or that one quote tweet. Like I put a tweet out the other day, actually just last night, um, saying that I was going to be moving away from COD a little bit more and moving on to CS and Valorant. I don't know if you guys have seen that, um, but I got like Paul and a couple of other people replying to it vouching for me and all that kind of stuff and you have no idea already that gets me talking to someone who's a tournament organizer for potentially more work just one or two people giving their little reference one or two people saying great caster vouch you've done so much for the scene appreciate all your work all that kind of stuff because if someone comes in they don't know me they find my page they see that they're like shit this guy's actually getting like plaudits he's getting praise whereas that you know if i tweeted that and it got like no interactions then obviously there's a big problem there and they will just think he's fucking nobody isn't he like that's the shit boys like, this is the reason why like, a couple of weeks ago we did that whole rating thing. Like, giving Mikey, like, a fucking solid, like, 10 out of 10 for being an SMM. Like, no kidding. Like, if you're good at what you do, you'll get the play- praise naturally. Yeah. Even if you're not. And, like, even if you're good at what you do and you don't get the praise, it will come eventually. And, like, all that kind of stuff is mental. I know that Void Project was three years ago. It's crazy. It's still one of my favorites. I still have them on my phone as, like, all the, de- all the phone backgrounds that you and Connor did as well. Crazy. <laughs> I think one thing we talk about as well, like as much as cast as well, like say for example, even EEG tweet or something like who's on mic, etc., or you know Val, whatever. It like it it's good that we've started seeing lately, like TOs do it like socially RT, like they actually at us in their tweets in their like three yeah. three one two one two zero like shit like that. Like it's good to get added and shit like that because as well. we always do it as well. We always like at at them in our tweets, like the organization next etc. Yeah. Blah, blah blah. Like it's just good exposure both ways. It, and it helps us further like but some people just don't want to do it and each as i said earlier each their own you don't have to support us you don't have to but it's just yeah it's just it's just appreciated yeah it is it's always appreciated and this is like we take the time on this uh on this show to speak about things that you know people don't normally speak about and to like give the give like we try and preach a a very clear message here on rummy boys which me and connor are all still like in line with and this is one of those things that we actually feel quite strongly about, which is why we felt the need to talk about it on the show. But uh, anyway, we'll move on to some spicier points then. Obviously, we got a little bit soppy there for a, mi- for a little minute. So if you guys want to tweet out the stream uh, as in line with what we just said, get the tweet out, bang a retweet on the tweet that we put out, etc. All that kind of stuff. It's uh, really, really appreciated. We know we beg it a little bit, but, you know, it has to be done in order to get ourselves. By order of the Brummy Boys. By order of the Brummy Boys, get us a fucking tweet out. Right, next up on the list... <laughs> Next up on the list, Arion Crazy versus Nick Bailey Lethals. Here we go. I now, love this. This oh, was oh. this was fat deleted. So Connor, you can take the time away. See, luckily enough, I think it was Mikey. It was either Mikey or myself. I can't remember who. I'm going to get props to Mikey for it. I think he caught this and screenshot it to me before. A few people tried to get away with it and delete it. Of course, a little bit of funny. I think it's just more jokey, jokey banner, but it's just fucking hilarious, right? It just goes back again that. It just seems to be socially boys taking shots at crazy and it's just fucking lovely to see. So there's some tweet that went out about what org would you love to see back with some and uh crazy at he put at retribute for sure and uh Mikey quoted it and put throwback <laughs> and crazy for some reason got fucking crazy and went to respond and he put only if someone ran the organization properly. And now to me that's just a class tweet, right? It just goes back to the to the fine example of nick lethal's great in so many orgs but then nick actually the ball they did fuck come back of a banger and then put only if you could actually tweet properly <laughs> and it's just the fact that i think for the last two weeks we've just seen the whole social lot sort of ramp on crazy for his tweets and how he tweets on social media 
And it was just the fact that Nick Leaf was really dug deep and took that fucking shot, and it was just, it was just fucking great. Nick found that from in there, didn't he? He, he had to muster up a fat bit of hate there to just aim the scope right onto Crazy. Who by no means is a bad guy either. That problem with him at all. But it's just like, yeah, you can't even fucking tweet properly. Not it. Great fire. I'm just reading the chat. It is, it's so good. It is so good. To be crazy, he's working hard to improve what he's doing, which is good. I don't know really much about him. Um, the first time I was made aware of him was when Paul brought him in for something to do with pushing media. Um, and uh, I really haven't, since that point, heard much more about him besides these like SMMing for Arion, I think. Yeah, I think um, he's doing that. I mean, for the whole ELC thing, I can sort of give light on that. I feel, on. do I feel bad? I mean, I don't feel bad. It's more of an honest opinion. So, obviously, I'm a host of social media. Uh, I don't own it. I don't have a say in it, whatever. Get me guests. That's what I do best. You know what I mean? I work. So, looking for staff. Uh, Paul brought in crazy. I've never heard of him before up until this moment. I know we followed each other. I uh, never really spoke. And then he brought him in, and I gave just a little bit of a, you know, a little look in the background of what happened, uh, you know, his tweets and stuff. I seen he was working for Arian Gaming as well. So, I went on their Twitter to me. Um... He's not a good SMM. I read the tweets. I've seen how they come out. And I was a bit like, ew, I don't want this guy really wording stuff and I ain't mean it because it's just, it can. Just a bad some look, word, Yeah, some words can put a bad look on someone's name. So it can tarnish it. So I said to Paul straight away, I said, listen, um, yeah, I don't really want him as the SMM to work with us to put the tweets out. Don't feel comfortable with it. And uh, yeah, Paul was just like, yeah, of course, like we, we can make a change. Um but yeah, that's no rag on crazy. Uh, as, as someone that was when he was first starting out as well. So Yeah, as Mikey just put in the chat, he's working hard to improve it. And I hope he, well, he has made improvements. Uh, I've seen a few of his tweets. He is getting better. But just for me, back then, personally, it was more for me, like, yeah, I don't want to work with him sort of thing. Because it was like, no, the Nego thing, because an SMM is an SMM to me. It doesn't matter if you can tweet correctly. I don't give a fuck. But it, it was more to the point that it was just the way he tweeted things. Well, he it just can't... hasn't got, like, proper capitalization, grammar's yeah. off. Like, it just looks messy. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. Like, if social media managers need to be able to actually fucking spell, it's a good one. Uh, he's been in my DMs too, so he's definitely trying. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the best thing. People who are going to succeed in the industry are people who actually reach out for help. If you're not reaching out for help and you're not reaching out for, like, constant improvement from other people, then that's it, you know? Like, you're not going to make it because other people are your best critics. You are blind to what your own see. I think... I am, um, like, I think I, like, I look back at my casting and I try and look at it as objectively as I can. But that doesn't matter. Like, I get criticism from, like, I hold shift or something that says this differently. And already, that's immediately I'm a better caster now. Like, I see it right away. Other people see things that you don't about you. Um, like me when I put aside. I know, contestment yeah. and all that shit. Like, leaving dead air, like, umming and ahhing. Yeah. And now you just kind of flow. Like, it's still all those kind of things, man. You just kind of go with it. Laura says she types hers in notes before she posts. Super paranoid when I tweet. Yeah, proofreading as well. Something that's just a yeah. basic skill. If you, don't, if you don't have to delete the tweet, it's even better because people have notifications on. They see the tweet get posted. Well, yeah. Um, shout out to him for working on himself and getting further. However, for the uh, whole socially... Uh, sorry. Crazy versus Nick Lethals. That was sort of it. I just thought it was fucking hilarious. I want to talk about it. Oh, just a good um, tweet, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But moving on, though, we're still on the topic of socially. And we're going to be diving into Mikey. So if you all missed it, it's socially Mikey leaving socially esports. Is he still Twitter? Is socially Mikey? Um, yeah. So as we all seen, Mikey had a bit of a meltdown on Twitter the other day. Uh, about you know his personal reasons, I'm not sure if he still got it up or if not. I think, I think it... yeah, I don't. I don't really want to read it out anyway. If it is up, um, each of their own. <clears throat> yeah, for him, he had a bit of a meltdown on Twitter. Uh, yeah, okay, deleted it. T took some stuff out on Twitter. You know, put a massive thread out about how he's feeling and you know stuff. We've spoke to Mikey time and time again on this channel uh, to you guys publicly as well uh, to private DMs. You know. If you are struggling with your mental health, with your depression or something, you're not alone. Don't feel just because that we're not directly coming towards you every time. It doesn't mean we're not here for you. Uh, you need to understand a lot of people have a lot of stuff on in the world. Like, not in the sense that the world doesn't around uh, revolve around someone. It's more to the fact that people sometimes have their own shit going on. People sometimes are working. People sometimes are focusing. People sometimes are just doing whatever, right? 
But just because those people aren't directly talking to you every second of the day or they're coming at you, it doesn't mean that they're not there for you. It doesn't mean that at all. So, yeah, again, to you, Mikey, before we talk about it, yeah, by any means, me and George, totally time time again. Feel free to DM us if you need advice, if you need to talk to someone, if you need help. Um, we're more than happy to sit down and chat with you. Yeah. Individually, together, like whatever you prefer. Like, it don't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Also, but, just seen Eamon's comment in chat. Uh, what are my opinions on Valorant? I think it's fucking awesome. I'm going to be casting it in a week's time. So, yeah, I'll be excellent. excited. That. I've, been, I've been playing so much of it. It's all been playing. Um, I, think, I think that's what we've been sweating on. Yeah, I know. I'm still shit. Yeah. Uh, right, anyway. Socially Mikey's tweet. Uh, I have left Socially Esports. I'm going to be completely honest. The past month or so have been the most difficult of my life. I've started to look at my life, my past, and deal with the issues that have affected me on a daily basis. I want to, first of all, say that I am grateful. I am so grateful for everything that Jamie and Socially have done for me. I've dealt with hell, with a hell of a lot whilst being in the organisation. The organisation itself, I love. I loved working from it from the second I joined. It's by far the best opportunity I've had in a long time. And I'm so grateful that Jamie wanted to bring me in. That being said, I've made the decision to leave. I'm leaving on good terms and I love the org, every single staff member, and even the members in the org who have been here for, uh, who've been here for me and have supported me like crazy. It's no secret that I have a lot of mental health issues and I feel very alone in the world. There are two people who make me feel like I'm not alone, my Juro Harry and Mr. Jamie Ryan Birch. Last night, I had quite the mental breakdown. If anyone saw the thread, I apologize. I have now gone back to work on those issues I have. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be looking to join an org as a social media manager. Maybe, absolutely. I need time to be productive. I need to be productive and I need to be busy whilst I deal with these issues. I'm going to take a few days off and then we go again. I would like to reiterate, I'm leaving socially on good terms. I'm so grateful for everybody, especially Jamie, who has been there for me, both professionally supporting me, but also personally. Thank you for everything. And whilst I don't necessarily agree with the decision to leave socially esports in Mikey's terms of a career term for Mikey, I think that's a really, really well-written apology. I think uh, not even an apology, just a really well written reason for leaving. Now, personally, I'm not a big advocate of uh, putting all the feels up there on the timeline. Uh, whenever I've got stuff going on in my personal life, I generally don't like to tweet about it just because I feel it's better to go through my natural support network. And I don't want to bring negativity to my timeline, especially when I'm a professional. Uh, I have people who look at my timeline as a way to know who I am, what I'm about, and if they want to hire me or not. And that's the kind of thing that I don't want on my timeline personally. But I understand for Mikey why he feels like if he feels alone in the world at the moment, then this is probably the best place to go for it. It would be out to the public on Twitter. And by all means, I'm not going to go into this. We're not talking about this topic as Mikey's mental health issues. We're not talking about this pro this topic yeah. as like the reasons why Mikey left. We just want to talk about this topic as Mikey and socially as mm -hmm. two the two, two entities parting ways. And that's all we want to talk about it as. We want to respect Mikey's time. We want to respect his, his personal space. We want to respect socially's personal space. And we don't want to like pass comment on either of those two things because that's not for us to say just making this abundantly clear this is about the parting of them and the organization and i personally i thought mikey at socially did honestly the the single best work of any social media in the am scene that i have seen there is nobody who does it better and at socially mikey started to change the game with some of the stuff he was doing like that that um what was it like investigation thing he was doing every thursday it was actually really cool i checked it out when he sent it to me because i asked about projects and stuff people were doing and it was actually awesome like i tried to get involved with it it's just a little bit too far gone for me at this point like i don't really understand but he's doing stuff that it's interacting and i would love to see like a graph of socially like average impressions a month from when he joined to now where he's left i reckon it will be a straight upwards curve yeah um what i'm confused on is that his left socially to focus on himself but he's also putting the thing that he's looking for an org to work with so i'm confused about it because you either you're either taking time off for yourself to not work and just you know re you know just recharge or you're looking to go elsewhere i don't i yeah. don't get now it. i've spoken to mikey about a few of the personal reasons and i'm not going to go into that on stream like i understand the reasons why he's decided to leave socially particularly it's not to say just before anyone starts to speculate that socially is the reason why he's having a mental problem at the moment but um like i say um he's looking for new projects that's probably just something because there's something in socially that you know maybe is is a problem i'm just speculating at that point like this is not something that i know for certain and um Maybe that is the case, but it's not our place to say. I do think, though, just to give Mikey a bit of gas when he's in a low time, 
Spikey, you are the single best social media manager in the scene at the moment. I think probably in European amateur esports, full stop. Agreed. Um, I think you should be on a top flight organization managing their social media with a team around you. I think Agreed. you will be fantastic at that. And Agreed. personally for me, even if it's not like, um, I know Ados have just filled their SMM position, which is unfortunate because I'd have thought that would have been a great fit for you as well. I know Reese is a big fan of you. Um, I am so proud of you for all the work that you've done and even continuing to fight your battles while you're doing the work as well. I mean, we have to do it obviously as casters and we have to keep a, like a cheery persona and like maintain all of our like camera facade even when we're not feeling like, like Mess has got banging headache, but he's still coming here today and doing it. Like this is the kind of things that we have to hide behind as well. You, as much as you guys don't get, like a lot of people don't have that problem. They don't have to like liven up for anything like liven up for the timeline liven up for the the camera performance mikey has to he has to liven up in order to get a tweet out make it sound the right way make it word like it's happy or like it's jolly or that kind of thing there's an art to uh, being a social media manager and uh, mikey is the best there is in my opinion so i just wanted to put voice on that i wanted to put it in the show as well just because i feel like mikey he's a big fan of ours and probably needed a little bit of a yeah. pick me up so anything that we can do to, to help him out and to give him more opportunities is goes back to jamie's tweet just more opportunities more love it all works out in the end. Yeah, so so what you just put in the chat, um, Mikey, yeah, regretting the decision, I mean... I'm sure that Socially's door is always open, mate. Sure it is. Yeah, uh, Socially, if you guys don't even pick him back up, you are actually pretty delusional. You're fucking up. You you're are really up. delusional. If He's Mike like wants best, to come you're back... Not getting a best, you're not getting a better SMM. You're no, not. You're not. not you're not. Aaron, Aaron oh. Crazy ain't got shit on Mikey. <laughs> Uh, you're generally not getting a better smm so my kid my advice to you would be just take some time off recharge don't go elsewhere talk to socially say you'll be back in a week or two whatever re-break breathe up and then go back yeah i think my kid, like so exactly back. moxie i was about to bring that up he should be in the same position as nova like he, he is that good he is that good um, all right, just as a thing, we do have a curious cat going at the moment for any anonymous questions that you guys want to throw our way that we'll answer at the end of the show. We're getting near well, halfway through now, like about, about an hour and a half in, well, at least to when the, the stream started. So uh, we'll be getting this one over pretty shortly. We'll be flying through the next couple of topics just because we're running out of time. But Martial Punishment is potentially returning. Now, this is something Connor wanted to talk about because I didn't see this. So, Connor, Ooh. give me the rundown, mate. Is that the, is that the wrong one? Is that the wrong link, apparently? What, to MP Esports? No, to do the finger. Oh, to the Curious Cat. Oh, yeah, it is. And like we say, always, if you guys want to put out a tweet, that'll always help us. Um, anyway. There you go. So, I um, believe there was a yeah. series of tweets that came out of Martial Punishment today. I'm just looking at the thing here. So, the <laughs> future of Martial Punishment, a thread. Allow me to read. Hey, all. I'm sure you've noticed that MP hasn't been very active lately. We'll be taking the next few months to completely overhaul the team from management to content creation, everything in between. Let's be real here. There is no management anymore. They've all left. Management. We will be looking, we'll be in the search for a new management staff. This will include one owner, funding, cuts, and other topics spoken about privately. Social media managers, general manager, and our heads to our esports side, CS, Halo, and R6. Please learn to spell esports correctly, Martial Punishment, before you come back. Content. Our content team will be looking for a revamp too. We will be looking at getting a new team of creators, streamers and content creators. Uh, we are looking for a multitude of ways that we can benefit you in the future. And I believe it's looking very promising. Okay, that's not helpful. Esports spelled incorrectly. Esports spelled incorrectly. We'll be taking a back burner to a certain extent. So I believe esports spelled incorrectly has always been our most stable aspect. So we will not be participating. We will be not participating in leagues until our other aspects are stable and in a good place. Thank you to everyone for your understanding and reading through this. We are certainly looking to get the future, uh, get to the future, and we'll be back stronger than ever. Marshals. Now, Kodara is obviously the owner of Marshall Punishment, and um, I'm gonna keep it 100% real with you here. I have never liked this organization. I've never liked their branding. Oh, he's got the burgers. I've never liked their branding, and to be frank with you, I've never liked the way he spells esports either. Um, but the thing is here, I think that they, Martial Punishment is another one of these organizations that is falling into the trap of the typical amateur esports organization here, Connor. I think they're this falling into the trap of getting a content creator, just a basic management structure, and then it's a couple happening. of teams. A couple of teams. Yeah, this is like the 10th time that I think they'll fucking come back or something. I don't know, man. Like, for Kadora personally, I'll chalk it. I don't see... I don't see Martial Punishment making it in this scene. I don't see them being a great org. That's no disrespect to them. I just don't see it happening, man. They're, they're too doing many nothing breaks. special, man. Yeah. 
Nothing special. It's the same. We're going to get an SMM. We're going to get a card team. We're going to enter a league on a tweet. It's it's the simple, simple shit. Going to get content me, creators, personally. even though socially has got the most bloated content creator roster there is. It's yeah. unavailable. <laughs> For me personally, I mean, I, I would just completely knock it on the head, man. Like, it's they've took too much time off to keep having time off. Like, you're just not going to get far. And the thing friend. is as well, like, it, okay, it's fair that if you want to come back, like, like Reese did with, with ADOS, right, you can do that. The issue being with MP is that I don't know anybody who has, like, a deep-rooted uh, affiliation Marshall to the brand. Punishment. Yeah, I don't know anybody who's got, like, a deep-rooted affiliation to the brand at all. Like, who actually can say that they really fucking love the work that MP did before in the same way that people love the way that Cryptic was before, or the same way that people love socially as a family kind of organization, right? Who can actually say that, like, Martial Punishment was their favorite AM organization? Not me. Not me. I just can't. Like, I'm not even being disrespectful here. Please note that, guys. We're not being disrespectful. We're just talking our truth, and they're just... They're not going to make it in this scene, so... It's it's, it's literally okay. just a... It's just... It's just throwing money down the drain, isn't it? Each all I am orgs. <laughs> pretty much, mate. Pretty much. Uh, but no, martial punishment is just never... It's just never going to make it. Like, unless they actually have, like, a full-on overhaul or they get an owner in who just changes everything. Mm -hmm. It's just fucking... It's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like, it's just done. This thing is just done. Like, like you say, I just think you need to knock it on the head. It's not... It's not going to... It's like Mean Girls. It's like... Stop trying to make it happen. It is not going to happen. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. I mean, he needs to find something new to do. Something yeah. new that he can put his direction and effort in. They just did the same stuff as the other orgs, opening up to new ideas. The thing is, right, orgs, we've talked about this before. Orgs open, orgs get a COD team. Orgs get a few managers, tweet out for content creators, maybe contact a jersey provider and get some designs done. And then they close. <laughs> this just happens every time. Rinse and repeat. And then I'll move on to the next thing. Kadara wasn't an outgoing person from what I know. Funding was a slight reason for that. He follows every other org's route. Get a COD team, CS team, and hope for the best. Yeah. I would do this. I would say what Crazy's done. What Crazy says. Merge with a... Kadara would be more successful mm -hmm. if he has someone who's outgoing around him. Yeah. Um, I, as much as I know what it's like to want to hold on to a brand, you might have to bite the bullet here and just go in with somebody. I mean, look at Retribute, right? They had a uh grumpy for example i'm not particularly sure he's like a very outgoing guy like his twitter presence isn't particularly strong like his his personal brand isn't very strong but what he does behind closed doors is fantastic oh dear george what do you want about reese i completely agree so yeah merge or bite the or call it a day man yeah merge or knock it on the head and do something else that's what i've got to say about seriously it. I don't Me, think MP is going anywhere. It was it, it was a point in time where like it was like reasonably respectful when they had like a good challengers team last year with Nemo and stuff. But after that, nothing. Dead, dead in the water. Right, next one. Then we'll move on. Uh, we want to talk about this one because we love a bit of RT fames on this, this channel. Makes me fucking laugh. This makes me giggle as well. Connor, go on. You you run us off on this one, mate. So. <laughs> What? What Let me get the tweet. About? Yeah, let's get the tweet. Let's get the tweet because this is comedy. So you know, here on this channel, we like a good bang on RT uh, on RT on top <laughs> on on recognized talent. And we, the bottom one, sent you. we like an even gooder a uh, gooder bang on on their own of fames just because. Good meme, really. Isn't he? So, for your literation of what happened, fames. We tweeted out the way we tweeted it. Fames riding or loving X pros. Now, as we all know. The, sh the scene got shaken up by Singularity's um, bench and chain. chain yeah. yeah, bench and chain picking up Gizmo. So, a big shock. Sorry, guys, I'm staying to try and the headache. So, a big shock that come out. Um, yeah, so that come out. And then, you yeah, have RT Fames out of nowhere. He replies to Singularity's tweet. Just replies to it. His, all his reply was, Good luck, lads. But you should you should have picked up Mohog SH. Now, if we go on Mohog's Twitter, it is retired pro Call of Duty player making a return seven years later. Duo Pro CM. Now, just for context here, Mohog basically played at XP in 2013. I think was it tw when was it? Like 2011. Sorry, played at COD XP in 2011. Played um, on party. Yeah, and he got like top 32 or something like that. Um. 
does that constitute him being an ex-pro in a tournament that was primarily just pubs for COD XP 2011? No. Um, it doesn't. Uh, I don't think it does, to be frank with you. I don't have a problem with Mohog either. I spoke to him at Malta. He was a good guy. Um, yeah. Even though he did have a, a bit of an issue before Malta, which was a little bit weird, and we've spoken about that before as well. But um, I don't have a problem with him. But the thing is, he didn't even do well at Malta. It, 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 pfft, he's not a top pro anymore. Why would we be going for Mohawk? Like, is it a joke? Like, it, to me, like, even if it is just a joke, it's cringe. It is fat cringe because this is not the first and only time no. that this came out of him. Early this isn't on, the only tweet we have of Mohawk and Arteon Fames. Imagine the Mo. Imagine the Mohawk has been part of Arty on top. He even has his very own Arty jersey. I, I, the, the thing is, I, I don't know whether it's just like Fames like idolizes I... this guy. Does yeah. he think that he owes him something or something? I don't know. Like, I, Mohog, I, I, I really don't... Mohog is not a big deal. Like, he's a great guy. I had a really nice long chat with yeah. him at Malta. We sorted a lot. We had a really good chat over a bunch of different things that happened in Malta. But he is yeah. not a big deal. Yeah, he's not like... I just want to know, where Where do you think that... Where, do you where... think this guy's better than Gizmo? Do, do, just... do you really? Do you really I'm think that Mohog is better than Gizmo? Are you physically telling, like mentally telling me that he should have been picked up for S and G instead of Gizmo? No, I can't tell if you're baiting or not. It I generally been. can't tell. And the, like even to what the tweet George just read out, that was a quoted tweet as well because the first tweet was uh, Fame's point. Remember, I didn't build RT on top, but we built it. Uh, everybody has a part to play, but it's not just one person; it's everyone. Then, of course, he tweeted the co the quote tweet was: "Imagine D Mohawk has been a part of RT on top, has his very own RT jersey." And now, the, course, thing, the, the thing is, right? Like the reason this is a meme to us is because this was happening before Malta as well. Like I actually got DM'd by Fames before Malta, telling me that they'd got ex pros. You you put it in chat like it's bait. This is not bait. This is this is said, not bait. You you DM both of us separately and said. We should win this event. We have X pros or something. You have like X pros that. or attended Cod XP alongside Tommy in like 2013, uh, 2011. But bro, I, I, you didn't even finish top 16. I generally can't. I don't think he's baiting. I think I think he's just being called out for it. Fames, I don't think you're baiting, bro. I don't. I don't think, <laughs> you're, baiting, I don't baiting. think you're baiting, mate. I don't think you're baiting. I think you love this guy. He didn't even <laughs> finish top 16 at Malta. <laughs> Get me a scrim against him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. I'm shit on the sticks. Oh, Fame, I'm, I'm very confused, bro. Like, I get it, right? You think he's the dog's bollocks, but... And then Gizmo! There's, there's only so much I can tolerate. Like, I was letting this slide. Like, I was just like, you know what? Just dick ride who you want, yeah, right? I've seen this and was like, all right. But then I that. saw this and I was just like, this, this is fucking unreasonable. This is unreasonable that you think that he's better than Gizmo. I really... <laughs> I really hope he is baiting. I really I hope really, he I, I, mate, I hope if he's if he's not if he's not baiting, see a doctor. Yeah, I <laughs> hope you've got the ropes here and you're fully baiting us, brother. The Gizmo tweet was bait. Okay, that I can understand. Yeah. That I can understand as bait. But the second one is the way you've put D in caps. The Mohawk, like Jesus. He's not that big. He's not verified. He's got one thousand followers, and like we said, Mohawk is a fantastic guy. Well, 1.7, sorry. He's a fantastic guy. Sportsman at Malta, bang on guy. But he's not that big of a deal, is to my point. You're at I honestly think that, like, in in my, my mind, I see Fames literally thinks that this guy is the best thing since sliced I bread. Like up on, on the wall of him, candles lit around him, a little shrine. Fucking effigy <laughs> to this guy. To it or something. You I'm just really... say good night, Mohug, give it a little kiss, and then get in bed. It's so weird. It is weird. <laughs> it is weird. It is seriously weird. Anyway. I do, I do hope that's bait, bro. I hope it's bait. We'll leave that one there. Uh, moving on to more seriously weird stuff. This week, Aaron Hectic, my golden boy, uh, got dropped from his team by Vision centre-back, and it caused a bit of drama. Uh, this so, one, because Vision's my golden boy. I know. Hectic's mine. So... The, the idea being, I got dropped for vibes and attitude when I teamed with someone who was racist and so toxic, LMAO this scene. So, I'm a really good mate with Aaron. I think he's the truth, and I think if he gets on the right team with the right people, he'll become one of the best players in Europe. Now, that is a bit of an outlandish suggestion for the results that he's managed to garner so far, but, you know, who cares? Um, 
So we got dropped for vibes and attitude, which as we know in, in Call of Duty is apparently a really legitimate reason to be dropped because that also happened with the top team this week. Um, when I teamed with someone who was racist. So this is an allegation here that Vision centre back is overtly racist. Now, I don't know if there's any truth to that. Like, I... <laughs> I've never... Visions was racist towards Trawdy, apparently. See, I've never known Vision to be racist, and having him on the future for a good year, being friends with him for a, a good three, two and a half years. I've never known this guy, this kid, to be racist. I've never known him to outsplur. I've known him to take the piss a bit. I've known him to be toxic at times time. I've known him to swear. But never in my years I've known him, I've known him to do racial slurs. So unless that was something he was keeping away from me as his organisation owner, um, could be somewhat behind closed doors that I'm not aware to when I, when I was his manager or his owner. Um, and so I can't really talk on, it, on, it, on him behind the closed doors from me. But from what I know, I know that he's not. But in the same sense... You know, I'm very good friends with Hectic, and I know that he wouldn't. I don't think there's a reason to lie here. So to me, it's just very interesting from both sides that this argument's come about. Because to me and George, they're very, very close mates. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, there was a tweet saying, this COD is so shit, why do I play it? I'm quitting this weekend anyway. Hurry up and get these scrims done so I can go back to bed. Axe mind blown when it gets dropped from Visions. Now, I will say... I know Aaron really does suffer with motivation issues, like he is up and down like a yo-yo on whether he actually wants to play or not. Issue being here, like, if you're actually 18 now and you're trying to play, then play. Understandable if he's in a toxic environment where people are being racist overtly, that he might not want to play. He might want to quit because of that. Now, again, this is all just conjecture. It's all speculation because we have absolutely no idea um, if this is true or not. I think he was calling someone brown was the claim. And that's the thing back just put it in the chat. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's not it, it's a, it's obviously any form of racism is completely egregious. It is literally a hate crime, right? To be racist. It's like you your freedom of speech, whatever. But when you use that freedom of speech to literally attack someone for something they have no control over and you discriminate against them for that reason, that's just un unforgivable, uncontrollable. Like that that's just awful. It's like Saying the N-word, all that kind of business on stream, whatever, you, you just don't do not do it. Don't do it. Just steer clear of it for your own personal good. Allegations can come back to bite you years later. This is why Big Roy was never going to be a success because of all the problems that he had. Right? So with this instance here, it's a big thing to say, and obviously there's no way to prove it up, because none of Vision's teammates are going to come out to it, come out against him right now and say, nah, fuck this guy, right? Like, fuck Vision's. Because none of them else have gone with it. It's just hectic. So he's been dropped, and they all stuck with it. Clearly they don't think it's that big of a problem. But... The fact that they were just going at it on the timeline, or like at least subtweeting each other on the timeline, was just fucking mental to me. Like, mm. obviously, I get it. You've had a problem. You've been dropped. Players get dropped all the time. These things happen. Aaron is definitely not the worst player on that team. But if it's an attitude problem, or he's saying he's going to quit, then obviously, why wouldn't you drop him, right? That is fair. That is totally fair. Like, if someone is up and down in motivation, they're saying, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. This game's shit, whatever. Why the fuck do you want to play with that, man? That's just bringing your whole team down. Yeah, it's it sort of fucks up the mentality for your team. So for me, for example, I tried to keep a positive mentality. So, um, yeah, just try to keep, like, for me, I keep a positive mentality. So I surround myself with people that are positive. I surround myself with people that work. I don't surround myself with people that are not, that are yes men. I don't surround myself with people that are moaners and quitters. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this show, this, this uh, BTC with the guys that I do it with because we're all yes men. We all want to succeed. No, <laughs> we're, we're not yes men. I fucking hate all yeah. of you. <laughs> we're, all, we're all hard workers. We all want to succeed. It's why we work so well as a four. Um, so I can completely understand the, you know the dynamic of why you want to drop him if that has a massive effect on your mentality as a team. You can't get good practicing if you got one person in the back saying how the fuck you killed me and one bullet all the time and dead whatever like. Divinity told me he wasn't calling out and said his time was being wasted, etc. And he said he was quitting. So then they picked up Beanbag and switched the roles about a bit. Which I think is fair from Vision's yeah. point of view. Now, obviously, the, the only part of this that I care about is not the fucking roster move. I don't give a shit about roster moves. That's not what Brummy Boys is here for. Mm -hmm. um, but Brummy Boys is here for the fact that there's allegations of racism being thrown about. And that's un unacceptable. It's still whether that's actually true or not is what we need to kind of establish. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll kind of leave that one for a minute. 
from a player's point of view, when you're in a team with horrible vibes like Hectic is claiming, it does make you want to just quit. It happened to me three minutes later. Yeah. This is exactly what I was saying, Ding. Like, if someone's in your team being racist and they're horrible vibes and they're toxic or whatever, yeah. it will make you want to quit. Yeah. You will not want to continue playing. And if that is happening consistently and perpetually, then there's obviously going to be a good reason why Aaron's going to say that. And the idea being, I guess, is why Aaron's probably saying that. The reason behind it is probably something along the lines of, if I say this, if I threaten to quit then maybe they'll kind of buck their ideas up and stop being toxic. For me, I'd just straight up hit the problem in the nose. Just be like, why are you being toxic? Like, I'm not going to play on a team where you're being racist and toxic. And then they'll just be like, well, fine, leave then. But if you bring that issue up, likely it's not your teammates will bandwagon with you. Um, so therefore, you probably end up just dropping Vision at that point. Uh, I think the way Aaron went about it probably could have been a lot better. And I think the way Vision went about it in terms of response probably could be a lot better as well. But hey ho, right? These guys are new to the new to the 18 plus scene. They're new to like making these things big. They need to pop in off. They need to like get in these star plays and all that kind of business. So yeah, I guess that's all I got to say on that. However, I'm gonna to touch back on to uh, <clears throat> our latest topic. So I just received the DM. All right. Just received the DM off Fames. He's put the Mohawk tweet. I value him a lot as a person and as a player. He's a big influence in the scene back in the day. I value everyone who helped build the scene from nothing in EU, especially when they won land events and got £50 each. Mohawk winnings is 19,000 more than most in the AM scene now, and he has won back. Then he then he won that back in COD 4s to Ghost. He obviously has quit due to having baby, uh, to having a baby years ago, etc. I think his my tweet was bait. Sometimes I get a spark of motivation and tweet for days. Okay. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how he's built the scene. I've never heard of him until you picked him up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, last yeah. thing on the list before we go up to questions is going to be Ados's jersey. For those of you who don't know, they announced their jersey today at 5 o'clock. Kind of made a special request. And uh, not going to lie, it's clean as fuck. I like it a lot. And uh, again, Ados doing something different with the jersey as well. I know yeah. obviously that Ali has been involved in this, so lots of love for that. But they're doing something different with the jersey. This time around, what they've done is... Uh, well, the, the text isn't white on it, so it doesn't pop right away. It's kind of in a kind of darker grayish color. And again, just doing it different, doing it their own way, doing it as they do. And all the love and respect to ADOS for that. Not only are they different in the social media, not only are they different in the way they present their teams, not only are they different in their content creation, their streaming, etc. They're also different in the way they want their jerseys. So I spoke to Reese about this endlessly, and uh, he came back to me and said what he wants is a jersey that you wear all the time, not even yeah. just to support an esports organization. <laughs> And uh, I think they've really nailed that on the head. And I think this is more of an attitude that more people need to adopt going forward. Like these people, like people need to actually adopt this kind of mindset of thinking like if it's a brand, if it's like a uh, an apparel merchandise that we want to sell, it needs to be more than just an esports brand. This needs to be something that people can get behind and wear naturally or just wear even if the esports dog is dead like I do with my Void jersey, not just because I'm attached to it, because I like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. I agree. Go on. I think the thing on it as well that I like it's the collar. They've both got Ados and armor on. Um, yeah, I mean, Reese was very up and down. He had, I think, he had two to three different decisions. Three different um, designs. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I gave him my advice on what I thought each one was as well. Yeah, the design, the design's very, very clean. Abnormal colors to what you don't see, so it works even better because people are just very used to you know just banging white on that. I like the pattern in the background as well on the jersey. Like I'm a big fan it's, of it's similar to what I have on the Void jersey actually. We what... switched providers 24 hours ago. Ding ding. Hey, what? Provided... Yeah, I know. I saw. I noticed that it was armor this time. Um, so it's actually turned out a lot better than what I originally saw as the concept. But I had this similar thing with the the logo, or like at least the shape of the logo, kind of spreading out and out and out the under pattern of the jersey. I have that on the Void one. I think my jer Void jersey was one of the first to actually do that because the logo is so nice in terms of like expanding in just a shell. Um. So that's that's one of those things that's just really really good. Um, I I love it. I think it's great. I, I would actually buy one if I had some cash that came my way. Um, probably will if I get cash that comes my way as well. I'll start work again one day. Oh, rough times. Okay. I'm only I'm only in for two days. Key worker. Key worker. Literally. Go on then, mate. Yeah, Bring up that curious cat then. Yeah, on a whole world well on their jerseys. But now we uh for the last segment we'll move to your and and. Blah, 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 blah anonymous questions of course <clears throat> if you want to put anything in the chat feel free to do so we will take them the reason we've done anonymous this week is because a lot of people love to hide behind you know asking stuff where their name is sort of not in the way of it so 
yeah, we, we talk to the curious kitty of all. Um, but to kick things off, start with the first one we got, which is why is Spaceman the best commentator you've heard? He's not. And I know yeah. this is obviously Sean who's put this in, but yeah, he's not. Sorry, Sean. You're not. Sorry, bud. You're a great caster. Six mark question, great... but it's not the answer. Yeah, you are a very good caster. Would you say... I'm going to say not. No, me neither. Would you say it's too late to get into the COD scene now? You've been out of it for a couple of years. No, I do think COD is in a place right now, though, where it's more difficult to get into it at a top level, uh, which is the reason why I put that tweet out yesterday. If you guys haven't seen it already, I'm going to be doing less COD work now just because of the way that the franchise is and because of the way that European talent is currently viewed upon and all that kind of stuff. So, um... It's much better for me to go into other esports. I think it depends what you're trying to do in Call of Duty in terms of getting into it. I think esports as a whole is a much better industry to try and get into if you want to try and get a job in it. Uh, don't just try and vie in for Call of Duty is my advice, at least. Yeah, great. That answers the first one. Second one is who's the better caster out of you two? Um, we can easily say George. Can we? Know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you taught Well, you helped me sort of get back into the I think it's just because I've been doing it longer like the longer you do it the the easier it becomes to kind of just cast like I can cast like shitty league games for like EG or Val or whatever on a fucking autopilot and just don't think about the words that are coming out of my mouth but like when I actually try like I do actually I've, I think I'm pretty good like I think having the confidence in yourself to know that you're like this good or you compare yourself to someone you say like yeah I'm better than him or like I know exactly what I'm saying I'm better than her etc yeah. like I, I think that's good to have that confidence. Uh, do I think I'm I'm the best? No, by no means do I think I'm the best. I think I'm dog shit, so yes. I uh, don't know how I'll be a Valorant, um, but the more work you do on it, it's like practicing. You just practice, practice, practice. And Connor's had less time to practice than I have. I've been doing it for a couple of years longer than he has. Um, but I think Connor's great. Uh, I won't say that he's better than me, um, just because I've, I've been doing it longer. That's all. And it's just practice makes perfect on that one. Same for that. Uh, to me, George is better. Obviously, he helped me get to where I am, so... Whoever tried to, you know, create the cluster fuck of an argument there, well done. Backfired because nice work. We we respect each other. <laughs> Second, uh, third question is, <laughs> do you eat ass? <laughs> no. Oh, I've dabbled. I've dabbled. I've dabbled. I've, da I've been around. I've been around. I've dabbled. Do you know, I want. I've dabbled. I've dabbled. Uh, next one, Mikey leaving socially thoughts touched on that. Uh, going up next. <clears throat> Best projects happening right now, social media and content-wise. Ados, Ados, and Ados. Mm -hmm. And Beyond the Call. <laughs> yeah. George gets that season. I mean, By Connor. Wrong, uh, By Connor. Wrong, uh, yeah, I've dabbled. <laughs> <laughs> dabbled, dabbled. Uh, what do you think happened at Malta? Yeah. Come on. In terms of social media, the one that's uh, at the top now, it will be Ados. Ados, 100%. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the way they're announcing stuff and doing stuff, it's fantastic. Uh, in terms of content, I'm not really seeing a lot of people do content. Socially pushing out a lot right now. Um, you know, the social budget stuff, stuff though, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's sort of just, you know, like meet the, meet, meet the guys, who's who, etc. I don't think it's a bad series by any means. I don't think the After no, Action report is bad either. I think the thing on the After Action report that I saw I is he's waffling for 12 fucking minutes about something yeah. that doesn't need to be waffled I, about for 12 minutes. Yeah, I gave it my feedback on that. That's very unwatchable for me. I turned yeah. it off like three quarters to the halfway through. I, I couldn't watch it. It was, it was a bit boring. Um, who's ADOS? It's ADOS GG on Twitter, I believe. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, the after action report, I said to Nick as one DMs, I said, listen, that needs to be toned up. That needs to be something different. Uh, for me... Right in the trenches for that. <laughs> yeah. For me, uh, content-wise, mm, the best thing I've seen at the moment is probably the unsociables, which is very biased to say, but it's something, it. it's something new. Do you know what I mean? It's something new that I'm doing now as well. Uh, first game show I've done, and it flowed very, very well the first time we've done it, and it was very enjoyable to do so. For me, it would be that. Moving on next, Vortex leaving obtained for Afro and Co. Oh, George. I think it's bad, and I'll tell you why I think it's bad. It's because Vortex being an Italian player obviously has a communication barrier. And I think to get uh, an international player into a European, into a UK roster and get things uh, working together is really difficult. And I think just kind of moving on to a different roster just for the uh, like the idea of it being more skilled or whatever is really difficult. I don't not like it personally. I do not like the roster move personally at all. I would much have preferred that Wartex stayed with Obtained, but whatever his rationale is for leaving is clearly his own prerogative. 
I think that probably the better way to go about this would have been to just stick it out with the team and see where they'd have gone. Because they got top three like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Like, why are they now making a change? Why does Vortex feel like this is an opportunity? Is it because Gizmo goes and he's always been in with these guys? Or do you think he's like an ample fit for them? I don't know. I just think it's a bit of a silly roster to me myself. Yeah, completely agree. I would put that team still together. Uh, they're doing fantastic, but it is what it is. Uh, so I think about putting... someone else on obtain to leave before they asked. I thought Vortex snaked. I was yeah. told Vortex, Jay Rezzy and and um, the other boys. The things that come out was more of a snake. It was a snake. Yeah. So unless it was all a setup thing, I don't know. But yeah, for me, I would have kept that together. And to talk about what you said in the chat, H and K Reese, uh, Karasi is doing a very good job. I've told him myself. The thing for me is to why I can't put him there. I can't because... believe I've just been snubbed by that. Bromley Boys is the best series, Reese. Fuck off. Yeah, true. Um, for me, it, it, Revenge aren't pushing it enough, though. I'm not seeing I'm, it. I'm actually, I am actually seeing it. I, I'm going to disagree with you there. I'm, I'm seeing, seeing it on the timeline a lot. I'm not seeing it. And the, the, the another reason is because I spoke to Jamie the other day. Well, the other fucking morning. At 3 a.m., he's tweeting out about something, you know, what he's got planned next. And I said, why are you tweeting at 3 a.m., bro? Like, you need to who's, delete. Who's this. seeing that? <laughs> You need to delete this and schedule a tweet if you're not going to be up. He said, yeah, but we're sleeping patterns. But I said, schedule a tweet then. Schedule a tweet around the two-ish, three-ish when everyone's awake. Put oh. what you're going to be doing next. Like, get more exposure out there instead of tweeting at three in the morning when people like me are going to see that. Like, no one cares. Yeah, exactly. Like, no one, it's not going to reach enough people, so you need to change that around. Um, Someone else on the team was asked by Afro and Co. The person said no, and then Afro and Co. asked for text, and he just dipped you. Okay. I'm guessing they'd have asked um, Wardy. Mm -hmm. Would have been my bet. Because yeah. Wardy's router is just fucking untouchable. Literally. Uh, moving on, though. Jo Joey Gizmo joined an SMG and how it's going to change his career. Um, it's going to skyrocket his career, dude. Yeah. I Now, here's the thing. I know a bit of inside stuff about this that I'm not going to talk about, just to respect SMG, because I'm really good friends with those guys, and I think they're, they're all great. I don't want to talk about the inside dynamics of what was ever happening with Chain or whatever. Rationale for dropping them? Probably quite justified. Um, do I think Gizmo's going to succeed? Fuck yes. Joey has been waiting for a team that gets him and that is structured and is disciplined and has a coach to mould him as a player. This guy has been the saviour of the fucking scene for years and he's now no longer hindered by age. This guy is going to pop off. They're going to do it. I mean, like, who thinks that Nasty was a better player than Harry? But Harry, with Harry, Team War looked better than they did with Nasty. Like, objectively, like unproven form gizmo is not a better player at the moment than than chain was individually but i think in a team they'll become greater than the sum of their parts absolutely um yeah i agree with george i think in the terms of gizmo going up there now it's going to help him massively in his career well, uh, it's going to help skyrocket him it's going to help him push him further he's got the right mentality and drive he just needs to be shaped uh, as to what george said um i was, I was speaking, speaking with people the other day about gizmo just I understand that. Um, I understand that point, Dingbat. The I issue agree. being is, like, who has even got potential to fill chain shoes? I, I, I think how it goes as well, for me, it was when when Kleenex moved up to that level, he's at now, to the pro level, being on Toronto, that really only, you know, the, the massive talk was, you know, it's, it's Gizmo and Kleenex who's moving up, you know what I mean? That was a massive talk back then uh, in the Black Ops 4 days. And obviously it was Kleenex. And then after that, I think Gizmo's name just sort of slindered. Yeah, just kind of slid by the yeah. wayside for a bit. It just, went, it just went down a bit. I will say that the team dynamic he was with, with Electrify, was not good for him. And Afro's team, when he was with that, actually was really good. And I think they yeah. had a lot of potential, but they just needed structure because they're all new players, really. It was just disarray. Um, I think he's playing with people he's played with before. He's obviously friends with Insight and all that kind of lot. Um, so I think circle wise with Phoenix as the coach as well to mold him as a player I think we'll see um, Gizmo back in like his bulldog and cryptic days start to come into fruition again I don't see I don't see a reason why not to be honest yeah. I'll give it the I'll give it the positive benefit of doubt for now I'll pass judgment on it in two months time yeah we, we need time to you know look on it and reflect um, moving on though which organization slap which organization, which organization slash organizations, apart from ADOS, can you see breaking the mold of the typical AM org and potentially coming out of the AM bracket? I would have said uh, socially before Mikey left because their social media was what was setting them apart. Um, I'm not so sure now that Mikey's gone. Um, I really don't know, to be frank with you. I don't think there's anyone out there at the moment in the AM scene who's doing a great deal. Like, Obtained have a good team, but I don't really rate 
well, I don't see that much from the organization. Uh, the Atlas Lions are doing good, but I don't think that they're doing everything they can to set themselves apart. Um, I think Amir is a businessman, and I just think the org needs some personality. Elite yeah. as an organization could pop off, that's right. Um, and they've got a good team behind them as well. Their clothing and all that kind of stuff is clean. They've actually got a good direction. But again, I feel like they're just an org with no personality and a lot of businessmen. Yeah, I don't see enough about them. That's the, that's the second. Yeah, I just think that an org needs personality. And obviously, if Mikey is currently, like, to use the term, the free agent at the moment, any of these orgs should be looking at him. Even Revenge should be looking at him. Yeah. Because Revenge are lacking on SM side as well. The only time I hear of Elite is, is in the tournaments. That's it. Like, that, that's generally... I see like them that. on my timeline. I Because I, I think I, I follow the players and stuff as well. But, like, I see them on my timeline. I just don't think the organization has any personality, really. Um, they're relying on their COD team to pop off for them. I agree, Dingbat. Um, mm -hmm. they cut the arrogant shit absolutely I think the org like I'm saying just needs some personality like ADOS has got like socially had or socially yeah. probably still has to be honest because the people in it is enough to carry that personality itself I think, I think socially can in terms of content not esports I think they can break oh, out oh yeah for sure content not esports well the thing is with socially they've never really made a, a conceited effort to have a really good team in anything I think their yeah. CS team is their biggest banking point right now and I think their CS team is yeah. quite good I just think I need to see more of them and I, I think, think... four as well CS from I think in COD as well, they definitely have the budget to go for a, an AM team. Yeah, it, it, I mean, social content is doing amazing, but like, it's average stuff. They're putting out a lot of stuff right now. I'm guessing this is like building blocks, foundation for it to be improved yeah. later on. I mean, like I spoke to Nick this morning, I said like, you need to keep at it, but you need to make it unique and watchable. Like, you can't just keep putting out the same shit. You need, it needs to be unique and watchable. Their cold team at the end at the start of BO4 was good, but then the egos ruined that. Yeah, there's lackluster in Elite. to be fair, if they got locked down, it'd be sick. Oh yeah, I know. There's so many. Yeah, Elitist has potential. I think they can do it. The issue with Elitist is that they just seem really dry, and just mm -hmm. seem really dry. There's not much personality coming from them, to be honest. And I really wish there was because they would do a lot better. I think they I think it's like the same as the Atlas Lions. It's an organization which is mostly run by businessmen, and they're just doing what they can to kind of pump out the money, pump out the just the fundamentals to get it sorted. But they're not doing anything to set themselves apart right now. Yeah. Uh, to you guys in the chat, we have two more questions from Curious Cat. So if you do have anything you want to ask us, feel free to put it in now before we wrap this up. Uh, so moving on, next one is. Unifies unlaunch charity stream and Buzzkill Connor joining them as an owner. What do you think of everything? I think it's great. Uh, yeah, I w can't say just yet what we're doing, but we're going to be working with them in some kind of a way. Um, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think Unify is a great thing. Valorant tournament hosts are going to be starting to pop up everywhere. I mean, ESL before we've done it, LVL are doing it. So there's Valorant tournament host popping up everywhere right now because it's a free market because um, just like League of Legends, it hasn't been franchised yet because it's still in beta and there's no teams. There's no kind of like franchise or whatever being picked up. So I think for now, it's great to have teams like this doing charity Valorant streams. And I think the charity match was right time, right place for Valorant being a really hot topic at the moment and um, having the right people on it as well. I think it was great success. I'd just love to have been the one to cast it. Uh, I'm the same with George. I think it's great. I think what Harry's doing is fantastic. And I think Connor sees a fantastic opportunity by John Demers and Owen. I think this project really will blow and it will grow as well. Um, even in for the even in for the terms of, you know, whether the whether to step out of charity show matches and start doing leagues or tournaments, whatever for you know, normal basis. Um, I think it will be definitely fantastic and kind of jumped in at the right time, I believe. Yeah, Unify dope. I've got a lot of a lot of time for those Unify guys and all that kind of stuff. So definitely uh, really excited for those guys to start bringing something big. And um, for other tournament organizers to start diversifying into Valorant as well. I think it's a market and PC games, which a lot of these console TOs have missed out on for years. I think EEG should probably try and get into like CS or something like that pretty soon. More orgs need to have streamers on their org Twitch channel. Uh, I think basically it means that like they need to do like weekly streams on the Twitch channel for the org, not the streamer itself, which I understand. Um, I don't know. How do you mean, Reese? Connor's role needs to be clear to avoid. Oh yeah, okay. So his role as an owner needs to be clear in case they end up picking up a Valorant team that plays in the league. Is what I think he means. Can't be an okay. org owner and a tournament organ owner as well. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is my issue with the TSU stuff back in the moment just before this. Yeah, boundaries that's the boundaries clear. But yeah, there needs to be some transparency, absolutely. Anyway, final question, Mers, we got it. Final question is biggest potential ADOS or socially? Um, ADOS. Yeah, easily for me, ADOS. No rip on socially, but ADOS are doing much better in the terms of, you know, 
I feel more engaged with ADOS than I do with Socially. Yeah, Is I like it... the Socially guys. I love the ADOS content. So I like, I like Socially for the people there. I like ADOS for the people and the content and what they're putting out. Like, I love what Socially doing with content. They're pushing it a lot more. Uh, it's just ADOS are better on the tweets. The, the more, like, they capture me with the tweets more than Socially are. Hashtag get Mikey back, basically. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that. I think that there's uh, a long way to go. I think Reese's streams are top quality. And the thing about that as well is when they put everything together, um, when they put everything together and they like do those content videos, those little like stream highlights on the ADOS channel or whatever, I watch them yeah. fucking all because they're really well produced as well. It's not like they're just throwing up clips and clips and clips and clips, like all these kind of re-churning out channels just do all the time. They're actually putting effort into it. It's clearly defines what they're doing and I was on board with this project from the moment it started really, so I'm convinced. I agree. Uh, yeah, the way, that, the way that ADOS are with the tweets and how engaging it is, I definitely would say ADOS, but yeah, again, uh, same sense. Socially, they're doing fantastic on the content for YouTube and stuff, the videos. Uh, Nick's doing a very good job at what's coming out, so each their own personal opinion, just ADOS for me. Yeah, it is It is great. To be honest, Socially is smashing us on YouTube. Just in terms of volume of content, I think they, I don't know about quality. That's what I'm saying. Um, I think, obviously, like Nick says, that these are just the uh, the building blocks. Am I famous? Mom, I made it? No. No one cares about you, Harry. No. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think that's going to about wrap it up. We've been live for two hours now, two hours 13. I think the overall show has been live for two hours almost exactly. So uh, we'll leave that one there. The VOD will be uploaded to YouTube soon enough. Thank you guys, of course, to everybody who subscribed today. Of course, thank you to Snipes for the gifted subs as well. That puts us back up onto 58 subscribers. So 60 by the end of next week will be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, please, please, please. Uh, every follow, every thank you is fantastic. Let's just quickly give the rundown, by the way, it's across this two-hour show, who's followed, who's uh, caught into the stream. So Heavens, Iron Chain K, uh, Cameron S, Snipes, Grumpy, Snipes again for the 10 gifted, Mikey for the uh, Twitch Prime, Cam for the follow, Dano for the follow, uh, Heavens for the gifted, Jamie for the sub, Hot Coffee for the follow, Connor for the follow, and MNT Blunk for the follow as well. Fantastic. And Vipers, thank you Dean as well for the follow on that one. So that's going to be it from us today. Any more subs and everything to come on in, it's fantastic. But of course... That's going to be it from us. We will see you next week at the regular time on Friday, 7 o'clock. Hopefully, all being well. No conflicts, no nothing. And uh, hopefully, we've got some more shows coming back up next week as well. I know you guys have been missing the BTC show and the content that we churn out regularly. So, thank you, guys. Uh, send some love Chris's way as well. Uh, as well. He's been having a tough time at the moment, so make sure you give him a tweet and say, hope you're all yeah, well, you know, buddy. Or just go to the timeline and just, like, at Chris Dow from the love heart, please. Yeah, just give Chris Delf a bit of love. He's having a tough time lately. Uh, so when we've been spreading love on the stream, give Chris some love back in return, because, please, boys. Yeah. Really appreciate it. You know, it takes two seconds to boost someone's day and to help someone out. So just fucking do it. Yeah, no reason to not. Uh, so, of course, uh, just to finish it off, thank you guys for everything. We appreciate all of your love and support. And, of course, thank you still to all the key workers. The pandemic is still ongoing. So make sure you guys stay at home, stay safe. Whatever the sanctions that are lifted tomorrow, please bear in mind that they are going to be uh, gradually lifted. It doesn't mean you can go wild yet. It doesn't mean you can do everything Don't crazy. Don't do anything stupid. Don't be a prick. Think about everybody else. And, um, yeah, that's it, really. Thank you to all the key workers and all that stuff again. Night, anyway, guys. That's it. Cheers for, the, cheers for the show, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you later.